Okay, hard to get some real information and real news these days as I navigate the internet all morning and trying to find out some news on the Fed. I'm going to break down what I think is going to happen tomorrow at the Fed because as usual, they're kicking the can down the road a little bit. This is also a very big earnings week uh, and that's what I want to talk about in this video as well and go over the charts over here on the right. So we will go over that. I have a lot of stuff pulled up over here, like these the earnings that I'm specifically looking at and kind of the tech sector. I like to focus on the NASDAQ because if you look at the, the NASDAQ, it's kind of all the, the tech. And tech is really where the market's kind of lofty right now, where a lot of the money's going. Um, things like Microsoft that just reported today, which it's very interesting that Microsoft reported today and they reported the good earnings. It was actually a decent earnings and they're down uh, in the after hours. They're down. So that's a scary thing because if you, if a, and, and also a telltale sign to me, because if Microsoft reported already and they're down, the Fed hasn't even amplified that yet. If the Fed decides to hike rates, that could very well amplify these earnings reports that are good. If they're good and they're, they still go down, they haven't even gotten the real bad news yet. So if it's already bad news before the bad news hits, I mean, that's a double whammy right there. So, I mean, that's very interesting. I've been studying the dollar index as well. If you notice these last two days on the dollar index, right at market open, the dollar index has been spiking. Right at the open, boom, people going into dollars, boom. So it's like that tells me people are leaving equities ahead of this report, like Meet Kevin, like these big YouTubers out there. Meet Kevin, I'm telling you guys, I, I don't, I don't want to be the, uh, the clout dude, but... I mean, the guy sells courses in the stock market. He's doing all this stuff to make money off of how much diamond hands. They got the diamond hands. Remember the meme stocks that I adamantly went against and had like, that was my most downvoted video like ever when I was like AMC and these meme stocks make no sense. It's not a real thing. Anyway, he was one of those individuals that was in that and, and preying on that, that crowd. Um, turns out he ended up selling all of his stuff before this report. Probably did some real information. Probably looked at some Rob Soltan videos. Sorry, that, that was egotistical. Sorry, couldn't help myself. <laughs> but I'm, I'm watching him kind of, you know, doubling down on his fact that he sold all his stocks ahead of this. And that's interesting to me because it, the way I look at it in the near term, it, it could go sideways. It could go slightly up. It could go down. I'm, I think it's going to go down. But in the long term, it's inevitably due for a major correction. So I think it's the right decision. Now, I did I think you should... You should, you know, be preying on your audience and making money off of them and giving them stock advice and all this stuff and then boom, dropping off the map. Um, I don't know about that much, but I do know that I would have probably done the same thing, especially because he was up a lot. Like he had he had really made a lot of money and I'm I'm jealous. There's part of me. So I do have a chip on my shoulder that back in March of 2020, I never expected them to shoot 14 trillion into the stock market. I didn't study how much of effect that was going to make on the stock market by injecting that kind of capital into the economy. And if I could go back, I'd go, wow, I should have bought a lot of tech stocks back then and then sold them around right now. You know, but nobody has a crystal ball and, and I don't have a crystal ball. Kevin doesn't have a crystal ball. Nobody has a crystal ball. All we can do is make a logical thesis for a five year, one year to five year, 10 year horizon. I think that's the way you got to look at this thing. But ahead of this report tomorrow, and it's, it's funny to me that they wait. So they say, oh, we're going to do it Tuesday and Wednesday. No, they're going to do it Wednesday. Tuesday is a non-event. So if you're, if you're navigating the internet right now, I'll save you some time. Just this live stream, I believe, will be worth your time when I show you all this information here on the right. Um, if it is, please do smash the like button. Uh, I'll try to keep that at a minimum, but it really does help when you smash the like button. So if this information is valuable to you, I spent the whole morning um, studying and trying to get this information together. So hopefully it does provide you some value. A lot of, the more I study, the more scared I get, to be honest with you. The more I go, wow, this is really, I mean, uh, do they teach acting classes at the Fed? Do they teach acting classes? Because they, they could use those. Um, Jerome, I, I don't know if you want to go to like where Leonardo DiCaprio rehearses and whatnot, but I'm sure, I, I don't know exactly if you want to fly into California or something, fly into New York, go to some acting classes, because you're going to have to have a good poker face tomorrow. <laughs> After looking at this data here for all morning, I mean, I'm going to show it on the, I'm going to go over to the other screen here in a second. You better have a good, good uh, team over there uh, to teach you how to do some acting classes, but Overall, it the for the market to be selling off ahead of this tells me people are worried and they're going to the dollar. They're, they're going to the dollar not due to trusting the dollar, due to being scared of the uncertainty in the near term and wanting to hold that money. And that actually tells me that it's a very unique time to follow that trend and be in a bit of cash yourself 
and be ready with a plan and a thesis going, look, I have cash on the sidelines. I think a market is going to pull back. And if it does pull back, this is my plan of action. Even if I was bullish on the stock market, which I'm not, I, I hold zero equities. Just so you guys all know, everybody who's a subscriber on my channel, please do click the subscribe if you haven't yet. Would really appreciate it. These are the types of videos I do. If you click the subscribe and the bell afterwards, we'll notify you of all future videos. Also giving a heads up on my Instagram story as well. So if you're here from Instagram, you probably check my story and I have a link. I found out you could put a link in there this whole time. I didn't know you could put a link in the story. Anyway, anyway, I, I, that was pretty cool to find that. I thought you had to have like 10K or something to get the swipe up. Anyway, anyway, sorry. Get distracted from time to time. I start ranting. But ahead of this report, I mean... For the market to be selling off ahead of this, the report, even if they raise rates, is a non-event. And it's so, it's so, it, what bothers me to the core is that it's a non-event and they, they amplify it by this anxiety trip. It's a total anxiety trip going, okay, we're going to, we're going to report on Tuesday and Wednesday. No, they're going to report on Wednesday. Today was a non-event. So again, if you're looking around the internet, you're not going to find anything because they're going to report on Wednesday. Uh, and that's when Jerome Powell takes the stage and all of that and presents his acting courses. But even if he does raise rates, it's not enough to do anything. I mean, you're talking about raising rates, what the, what the CPI is going up in a month or two, like literally if the C and no, no, probably less than that. Like the CPI every other month has been going up like a percent or like a half a percent percent. And they're talking about raising it a mere 0.25%. That, that's a non-event. That's nothing. So for people to be having this much anxiety in the market and going into the dollar like this and, and the velocity of the money to be so low right now, it's very obvious that people are not spending their money. It's very obvious that people are scared and that uncertainty is having them put their money on the sidelines and sell their equities. Now, another thing to be considering is a stock like Robinhood, which is just outright crashing right now. If I was in Ro if, if I had my equities in Robinhood, I would be very, very nervous right now. Excuse me, just me, me specifically, because I've talked about on this channel, the trust funnel of the stock market, because there's a lot of trust there when you have like, for example, I know not everybody's a Bitcoiner, but I, I like having a little bit. Um, so if you have Bitcoin, and you have it on your own device, your own cold storage. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the stock market crumbles. A Bitcoin, Bitcoin isn't in the stock market. That's just the ETF. And I, I argue that the ETF is a bad thing for, the, for Bitcoin and a bad thing for precious metals, as it obviously has proven over time. But and, it's, and this also applies for people that have a silver or gold bar in their safe. If you have a silver or gold bar, you have it. It's outside of the banking system. So it's not about, um, you know, which one is going to go up. It's a matter of which one are you going to have access to, period. Like, I will repeat that. It's not a matter of which one is going up. It's a matter of which one will you have access to. And if we have a market correction where the market, in a couple of these days, the market did fall down pretty heavy. If it falls down 7%, it has a circuit breaker where they literally halt the stock market. Just like Robinhood only allowed you to sell your GME, the whole, whole stock market halts everything. This is, this is the Robinhood of the overall entire U.S. equities market. They will just literally circuit break it, not allow anybody to do any trades, buying or selling. And then what happens then? Then you're trying to call your exchange. And what if the exchange doesn't pick up the phone? What if the exchange that holds your equities, because you don't have custody of your equities. If you have Apple stock, you don't have custody of it. You trust an exchange. You trust a Robinhood, you trust a TD Ameritrade, a Scott Trade, E Trade. That's where you trust. And so you're hoping that they pick up their phone. You're hoping that their app works. Imagine their app breaks down. Then you want to sell it, right? And then you got to go into the next thing and the next stage. And the next stage would be if you got lucky enough to get a wire transfer in or, e or a check to go or ACH to go into your bank. Then if you got in the bank, you got to hope that the bank's solvent if a market crack, correct. And, and I mean, then after that, you got to hope that the dollar holds its value because they've obviously diluted it quite a bit. So it's like, do you want do I want money in that system? When you really look at it from a third person perspective, and I'm I'm a non college educated individual, I'm just a a dropout that looks at this from a, that kind of a chip on my shoulder. I guess I hold a bias, but I look at that system and I go, "That's crazy! Like, why would anybody trust that? Why would anybody want to be involved in that? You don't have access to this money. Like, you don't really you don't really own the stock. The exchange owns the stock. You're you're this the the stock is in dollars." Unit of measure is diluted, which is in your stock. So if CPI is going up and up and up, inflation is going up, but your stock is staying the same level or going down and it's measured in dollars, that's a scary scenario. Like there's so many different little micro minute details that are not being picked up on from equities investors. And maybe meet Kevin finally picked up on it, and that's why he's dumping out. But anyway, let's go to some of these charts over here on the right. And 
we will start talking a little bit more about some of these earnings reports and whatnot. If you haven't liked the video, if I've had some good points here, if there's good information, all I, all I ask is for you to just turn that like button from gray to blue. It really does help get these videos out there to more people. And if you've been in my last prior live streams, it has been really helping. And those videos are picking up some steam. My Monday motivation videos don't get too much love, but you know what? We're going to keep up the Monday motivation videos anyway. That playlist is staying live because I need to inspire my own self from time to time. But let's go over some of these charts over here. There we are. Okay. So. And let me know. I'm looking at the comments as well. So let me know if you if everything's working all right, if the mic's working right, everything's working right. I think that I have it pretty dialed in at this point. And everybody that's shot me DMs on Instagram to help me get my live streams on point, I appreciate you because I have to be self-taught in this world around here. I don't have any editors or anything like that. The reason my videos aren't edited is because I don't have an editor. I have to learn this stuff myself. I'm going to put me over there. Um, so Microsoft just reported today. This was the latest report. Let's check Microsoft stock real quick. This was the first earnings of the week. And this is a telltale sign because these are earnings prior to what any movement has happened from the Fed. So let's go to the one day here on Microsoft. So Microsoft actually had quite a bumpy day. So it fell down with the market and the market sold off heavy in the beginning of the day. Had a little bit of a recovery before earnings. Earnings comes out. And then we see it just selling off in the after hours here. I think, let me see, Microsoft is down, wow, down 5% in the after hours. That's pretty heavy. So, yeah, down 4.5%. It was already down 2.66%. And then in the aftermarket is down another 4.5%. So that's scary because here's the scariest part about that is Microsoft actually had a good earnings. Like their earnings wasn't bad. So to be down 5% after their earnings, that was pretty good. Prior to a Fed update, I mean, that's that's not what you want to see prior to, you know, what what Jerome Powell is going to do. And what I'm going to show you here on these other charts is going to be a little bit staggering as well, or a lot stag a pretty, pretty shocking uh, information here. And this is like, the thing about me is I don't have a Patreon to sell you. I don't have a course. Go in the description. There's only my Instagram in there, <laughs> literally. So subscribe and my Instagram. There is no links. I don't even know how to do that right now because I'm, I'm just a... I'm just a college dropout individual, you know, I'm not, I'm not that educated. And so maybe I look at things from a different perspective over here. I'm the type of individual Powell doesn't like, but, uh, I, I'm just telling it like it is. I call in a spade a spade and that's how I roll with my videos. And so if you, if you roll like that, click the subscribe button It's over there somewhere, click the subscribe, hit the like, appreciate it. But here's something that'll blow your guys' mind. Let's look at right now. Let's look at the DXY. So with the DXY here, you see that on the 24th, which is, you know, yesterday, you see these spikes, like every, right at market open spikes, spikes, right, that spike, and then today, and again, market open spikes, like there's, the dollar is spiking on market opens, and that tells me people are selling their equities ahead of this report, just like meet Kevin, and they're nervous, they're nervous about it, it's very obvious that that's what's going on here, um, and this again is the dollar index, so it's, it's telling me people are flooding into the dollar because they want to be on the sidelines in hot potato money. That's what I think is happening here, and it's very, it's, it's very clear. The evidence is there. So let's look at the overall market real quick, and i got to keep moving myself around. At least I figured out how to do that. There we go. Um, so this is the overall market. Let's go with the five-day, and we'll go over the overall. Wow. So here's the five day on the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is down from in the last five days, down from a little bit over 15K. It was at 15.3, somewhere around that range, down to 14.1. Let's zoom in a little bit to the one day chart. And this is the one day chart. So this is market open here, and we see it selling off heavy at market open. And then it has a little bit of a recovery, comes back up, and then sells off again right at to the close. Uh, so when we pull that back a little bit, I mean, these are heavy gap downs. I mean, it had a little bit of a recovery yesterday, um, but then now it's given up a lot of those gains back. But I mean, if you really start scrolling this chart out, you realize this is actually a serious correction happening ahead of this report. But what's crazy is it's the market's already correcting. I mean, but when we actually look at the real data, we pull up the year chart, we realize that, yeah, it's got a lot of room to go here. You know, this was at the beginning when they started the money printer. Money printer is now getting turned off. That's the news they're going to give out probably is saying they're, they're going to finish the taper. They're going to stop the, um, the money printing, stop the QE. 
And then now we're seeing the market start to pull down. I mean, that's a heavy, heavy fountain right there. And then it lost this resistance. There was, a, there was going to be a little bit of resistance here at that 14.5 level, lost that real hard. And now it's trying to regain it, but it's not looking like it's going to regain that support right there. So now the next support is going to be somewhere around here, which is around the 13,000 mark. And then after that, you're looking at a support around the 12,000 mark. And then, I mean, it's, it's just to me, I just see, I just see this as a fountain just falling down right here. That's, that's how I look at the NASDAQ. Look at the S&P. The S&P is showing a similar chart, another serious pull down, and the Dow is showing a serious pull down as well. Uh, and but the main thing is the reason I want to show this chart in specific. Um, I got, I'll buy the net, for the next live stream. I'm buying the trading view. All right, no more ads in these corners and whatnot. We're gonna stop with that. Um, <laughs> but so basically. That is telling me that there's a serious correction underway uh, and there's a lot of room to fall. When I look at the chart here, I'm looking back from March of 2020 on this chart. So not just like the five day, the five days showing that. But when you pull up the real chart, you should see how much room there is for it to gap down. But let's go over some of the next earnings to be looking for. Here's a big one. And if you didn't know this already, I, I, I'm sure a lot of you did know this, but today's the 25th. It's January. This is the NASDAQ earnings. So let's go to the, we had Johnson Johnson today and Microsoft today were probably two of the bigger ones. But then tomorrow we have Tesla and Tesla has a lot of weight. So tomorrow is going to be a very interesting day. And I'm probably going to go live again tomorrow to talk about this. So if you're not subscribed, please do click the subscribe and the bell afterwards to be notified and follow me on Instagram. You get notified there as well. But that's one I'm very interested to to document tomorrow and go over and study because Tesla is un going through some stuff right now. Let me show you guys Tesla stock real quick. Here is Tesla. So this is the five day on Tesla has had a serious pullback over the last five days at thousand. Oh, congrats to Elon Musk, by the way, Elon Musk, you sold out at a great time, <laughs> he sold out well over a thousand. And now the market is, is proving that Elon Musk's thesis of, of a recession coming in 2022, by the way, Elon Musk did say on the record on Twitter, and I've made a video on this, that he thinks a recession is underway in 2022 uh, and not any later than 2023. So he thinks it's going to happen in 2022 is when he thinks a recession happens. And obviously it was a, he, he believes that because he decided to sell around like here. This is probably Elon Musk candle right here. <laughs> probably something like around right here or right here was Elon Musk selling off. Uh, but you see that the market is pulled back on Tesla quite a bit. This is the monthly, but tomorrow is a huge earnings for them. So if we see that Microsoft already is selling off and down five and it's still going down, it's not recovering. It's down 4.71% on a good earnings. So if Tesla has a good earnings and is still down, or if it has a bad earnings, I'm curious what happens with Tesla here. And that will really affect market sentiment. People really watch Tesla stock. Uh, and that, we'll see what that does to um, the overall market. So that is, that's probably the biggest one to be watching for the day when we look about for tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow is for sure all about Tesla when it comes to earnings. So it's like a double whammy of things to be looking at in the overall market. Um, just if, just a heads up, uh, if you, if you were wanting some good updates, that's a good update to be watching Tesla stock all morning tomorrow. And when they have their earnings report and everything like that, the uh, consensus forecast is pretty high. So they're going to have to get, break a pretty high level. I imagine it's going to be a good earnings. A lot of people are driving Teslas now. A lot of people are buying Teslas. It might be a good earnings, but overall, if as a good, if Microsoft had a good earnings and they still fell, what does that tell you? If Tesla has good earnings, they might rug pull it. Um, and that's, I mean, and Tesla has a lot of room to fall. I mean, we're just looking at this chart. I mean, let's, let's show you the real chart here. Let's pull up the, let's pull up the one year. Tesla has, <laughs> what a volatile chart. It looks like Bitcoin, right? I mean, like this is like crazy. Tesla's had a, just the most wild chart over the last year. Uh, I mean, this is March of 2020 here. So, I mean, you have a lot of room uh, to go there. So, I mean, there's definitely some icing there to go off the cake, but let's go to the next chart. I want to go to this Fred chart here, uh, or actually this, this one I was going to show after this one. So this is something that is, goes back to the fed news. And this chart is like, this really shows it all here. So this is the last recession. You see the gray areas here on the chart. If you ever were wondering what these gray areas are, it's a recession and how long that recession lasted when you see this uh, gray spot. So right prior to the 2008 recession, you had the market at the federal funds rate, which is when they're talking about hiking the rate, they're talking about the federal funds rate. Let me, got to keep moving myself around this screen, bouncing myself around. Here we go. I'll bounce me over here. Um, so... 
This is prior to the, re- the recession of 2008. So this is 2007. They had it at over 5%. So keep, keep this in mind. They had it at 5.26% here, right? And they're talking about raising it that 0.26, that 0.25. That's what they're talking about. Not the 5%, but that 0.25. So this is where it was prior to the recession of 2008. And what they do is when you're going into a recession, when the market is selling off, that's when they're supposed to drop the interest rates. They're supposed to drop it off after there's pan, there's, there's, you know, chaos going on. When there's chaos, then they drop the rate as a tool. And then that allows them to put money into the system and give out cheap loans. And then, the, then hopefully the economy recovers. However, there has not been a recession yet. This little gray line is just when the shutdowns happened. That's, that's all this is. This is March of 2020, February of 2020. Uh, this is not a recession here. This is just the, the, the beginning of things. So this, this is a recession. We haven't gone through a recession, yet they have the rates lower than ever before. They have them at zero. I mean, they keep it like slightly off zero, 0. 0.08. You know, I mean, it's, it's zero. So that's crazy. They've already used the tool in their tool chest. The market hasn't sold off yet. We're not in chaos mode yet, but they're already used their tool in the tool chest. And now they're talking about raising rates prior to a recession. They're talking about doing this prior to this. And they've already done this. See how they went down to zero in the the midst of the recession? At the worst of the worst, they brought it down exactly to the levels where they are now. Not even as low. We're at 0.008 now, but this is 0.009 they went to in 2008. Uh, So that's what they did to get us out of the recession. But we're already there prior to anything happening. So what exactly is Powell going to talk about? Why is nobody showing these charts? Like I look at, I watch like like CNBC and I watch these outlets and I'm like, what are these talking heads even talking about? They, it, the data is very clear. It's very obvious. You know, if you're subscribed to my channel, I'm just going to tell it like it is and show you the real data here. But I don't see this. I mean, it, it, for these huge, you know, multi-million, billion dollar shows, it's like the data is very clear. It's very easy to look this up, guys. Here it is. Like, there you go. This is the Fed can't do anything. Oh, they're going to raise it from here to here. They're going to go from here to here. Oh, wow. That's going to make a dent. But keep in mind, back in 2008, if we go to the, oh yeah, the next thing I want to show you guys is they're talking about unemployment. So this is a chart that that's pretty wild to me. So this is like unemployment peaked all the way up here, just skyrocketed when everything happened and it went up to 14.7. And now we're supposed to believe that it's had a perfect recovery that fast down to 3.9. I doubt it. I mean, back in 2010, it wasn't even that bad. I mean, it it was worse than they're saying it is now. I think that this is some, some fudged up uh, numbers over here. I don't believe that. That doesn't, this, you don't spike like that and then perfectly recover that fast. I don't buy that. So when they talk about the unemployment, I think we're in stagflation right now. That's just my personal opinion. Not a financial advisor, by the way, disclaimer, not a financial advisor, just a YouTuber, college dropout. Probably I'm just a total fool. Who knows? But I'm sure Powell doesn't like me talking about this type of stuff. Anyway, that doesn't, I don't buy that. If they say unemployment is looking good and things are coming back to normal, it's like, well, then why is CPI rapidly rising from point from 1.4% in January of 2021 and now it's over 7%, just not even a year later, they went to 7% in one year from 1.4 to 7%. That that seems, and that whole time they're calling it transitory. I mean, like this is some talking heads type stuff. I mean, total, it, it doesn't make any sense at all, but that's something that blows my mind is that that's not brought up enough. But then also the velocity of money. This is the velocity of money. I mean, we're talking from the 70s till now. I mean, even in the 70s and stuff back, like all the way back here, you see that they were moving money around. People were spending their money. This is basically how tight people are being with their money. And now we're seeing that in 2020, 2021, and this is at all time lows pretty much uh, at 1.115 on the velocity of money, which basically means people are being very tight with their dollars. And when we go back to the dollar index, it's very obvious that people are, that when you see the dollar index spiking and holding a level of 95, 96, obviously people want to hold dollars. They're scared right now. And this chart proves that they're scared. And that's the real situation. But we go to the historical inflation levels. We see this. This is exactly what I was talking about before. We see 1.36% to 7%. It's not just about 7%, although I think that CPI data isn't the CPI data they used back here. This is a different CPI. This, they, if they use this CPI in this number, it would show that we're like here. It, if they use the exact same figures and they didn't leave out certain 
miscellaneous things, it would show that we're way higher up here. We're actually, I am on the screen. Hang on, put me over there. All right. Um, so what I'm thinking is that's interesting is, I mean, when we go back to, let's say, yeah, even in 2008, let's go get this. There we go. Uh, when we go back to 2008, I mean, inflation was not very high in 2008. The CPI in 2008, 2009, 2007 was at 4%, 4 2008, 0.09%. was like nothing in 2008. Uh, and that's because they dropped the interest, the, the federal funds rate down to zero for that, that time when we were going through that. And that probably affected things because they used that tool in their tool chest. And then you go here, it's still 2.72%. Uh, 1.5%. I mean, this, this is nothing. And this is the last recession. We're going through a stagflation type situation where we are having this kind of jump in inflation prior to any recession. Let's go back to this uh, graph over here. Um, so in 2008, this is when they dropped the federal funds rate down and they brought it down here. But this, ha this is to salt. This is after the market collapsed. The market hasn't collapsed and they're already at, they've already used this tool in their tool chest. And then on top of that, no one's spending their money. The velocity of money is low. And then on top of that, inflation is rampant. So what are they have no, like, what are you going to do? You're forced to make a very tough decision. And the decision they have to make is to make the federal funds rate. They have to go back to the federal funds rate and they have to basically get the federal funds rate back up to, this is the, hang on, that's the wrong chart. They have to basically go to, they have to go back up to these high levels. I mean, they have to basically get the, the rate. This, is, this isn't even enough. Even if they go to 5% back than they did in 2008, it's not enough. They have to go back to a level of like the 80s. So if we go back on this chart, let me see. I don't know if it will let me go back that far. Actually, no, it won't. Um, but this is only showing from 2008. So this is showing the last. So basically, they have to bring it back up to this level. And when they had it at this level, we had a recession. So they have to somehow get this back up, up to here. And oh, by the way, they have a ton of assets that they're going to unwind onto the market. And that's going to make them have to, they're not even going to be able to do it. Like I just, it, it, this, where the Fed is right now, they have no choices, but bad choices. Like there isn't any good news. There's no possibility of good news. When you look at the real data, it's very clear. What can they do? There's nothing they can do. All they can do is give bad news or they can kick the can down the road and hope that they can kick it far enough to last three years until Fed Chair Powell can change and, and somebody else can come in and pick up that bad position that they're in. But, uh, I mean, I just want to tell it like it is in my videos. And when I go over the real data here, I mean, and this is what's crazy is when you look at this chart, I mean, back in 2008 and 2009, when they, this is, we go through a recession, the market, and this isn't a real collapse. And by the way, this collapse was over a housing market. This was a housing market bubble, not an, a currency bubble. The whole currency itself is a bubble right now. This is a far different situation over here than this one. Um, and oh, by the way, I'm kind of I'm kind of in the way right there. But let me got to keep throwing myself around the screen, just playing. I'm playing pong with myself on the screen. Bow, bow, bow. Anyway, back over to this chart. For for them to buy back then, this is like a serious chaos was happening here in 2008. The market was really selling off, and I don't even the, the circuit breakers weren't installed back then, so the market just boom sold off. And I think the circuit breakers is a bad thing because it gives people anxiety and pandemic. Like to me, it like makes you panic to sell when people when they forced people in GameStop to only be able to sell. It caused a panic, and everybody did sell, and it caused a crash in, in GameStop. I think when you have that circuit breaker in, and I think they put the circuit breaker in in like 2013. Uh, so if the market sells off 7%, they will literally halt the whole market. And the whole market, that means everyone will be sitting there at their phone waiting and like shaking to call and, and sell their equities, I think. I mean, to, I don't like the idea of a circuit breaker. I think that th that doesn't let a fair market be a fair market. That is not a true free market if you have circuit breakers in place. But it, and to me, it just it, when you have a circuit breaker, to me, it's like creating a dam. And what happens when you create a dam? Well, water builds up. And I don't like that. And we, they had some days where it's getting close to that 7%. I mean, if it does that, they circuit break. And then there's more circuit breakers, I think at like 8 and, or like 9 to 13% or something like that. So I don't like the circuit breaker thing. Um, but what I want to talk about on this chart real quick too is when you look at this jump right here, this is their assets that they bought back in 2008. So to, to get them out of, to get us out of the chaos that was happening in the last recession, uh, they bought, they went from $1.98 trillion on their balance sheet to about, let's see here, 
two no no wait hang on hang on they had on their balance sheet here i was looking at the federal funding they had they had less than a trillion on their balance sheet so they had like 900 billion on their balance sheet not even a trillion was on their balance sheet back then when this first recession hit then they bought with the assets on hand so when they did like stimulus and they put money into the market they bought 2.2 trillion back then that was all they bought then this is them since then they go through this and so this is the other tool in their tool chest. And they just is, this just goes to show you how much they use. It was $2.2 trillion back in the last recession they bought. That was all they bought. This time around, they really ran that printing press. That printing press went hot. It went from $4.4 trillion, $4.1 trillion, all the way up at this peak right here. They're at $8.867 trillion on their balance sheet. Over $8.8 trillion in the balance sheet. And oh, yeah, they want to unwind that back into the market. They're not just stopping the QE. They're also going to do something like this. You see how this slopes and they're unwinding it right here. They were un this right here shows when the Fed was doing the right thing. They were raising rates, raising rates consistently, and then they were unwinding the assets on their balance sheet back into the market. But now look at this complete utter divide. You have rates at zero and you have eight point eight trillion on the balance sheet. What are you going to do, pal? What good news do you have for us? Exactly. It, it, it blows my mind. I, I, the data is so clear. So, I mean, it's, it's just, it's laughable to me. I don't want to be one of those channels. I mean, I remember back when the stimulus was happening. If you go back in my channel and all the people that are subscribed to me know this. I mean, if you go back in my channel when they were talking the stimulus update, remember that moment? Meet Kevin was one of them. And there was like some tax guy that was one of them where they're like, stimulus update, stimulus update, stimulus update, like preying on everybody who was weak in the economy, you know, and oh, subscribe to me for the stimulus update. And it's like, I was the whole time I was going, this is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. I don't like this. And there was people that are like, oh, we need it. This is how don't talk like I'm like, no, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it. And so if you look back on those videos, like if you scroll through my channel after this one and you go through my old stimulus update videos, I would say the real stimulus update. And I would say exactly what I'm saying right now. I don't flip flop. That's the thing. I'll just tell it like it is. I have nothing to sell you. I just want to rant. And I appreciate people are here letting me vent because I'm I'm just annoyed. Uh, I'm annoyed that there's not real data out there. I'm annoyed that often you'll see influencers, often you'll see these news outlets and whatnot, just not saying the real information. And it's not that hard to dig into this and find the real information. Common, I guess common sense is uncommon. Common sense is not really a common thing in today's day and age. And so I, I hope I have a little bit of it and I try to share it on my channel and just tell it like it is. So if you're not subscribed, would really appreciate you subscribing to the channel. If you're not following me on Instagram, it's a nice place where I can give another notification out there in the story, and I show what I do for a living and collectibles and all of that on my Instagram, at Rob Soltan on Instagram. Uh, but that's all I have in the descriptions down here. I don't have anything, links, there's no, I have no, I have no stock course to sell you. I don't believe in having any equities right now. I believe in being safe in safe haven assets right now and having some cash and dry powder on the side. Like what a, what a sales line, what a sales line. Yeah, yeah, have, have dollars. <laughs> Sit on some dollars right now, 20%, 30% dollars right now, waiting out the storm. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm trying to get together. It's very hard because there's so many opportunities right now to, I want to, you know, that I want to spend the money on. But right now, what I'm doing personally, again, not financial advice, just a YouTuber disclaimer. Uh, I'm not giving any financial advice. Guys, I'm not giving financial advice. No financial advice. Don't turn down my stream. <laughs> but um, seriously, um, I believe in having a little bit of cash ready right now because I think that that's a good move. And, and people in 2008, 2009, they really benefited by having cash ready. And I think that's what me, Kevin's doing. I, I think because he profiteered off of people getting in the stock market, off the AMC thing, off the GME thing, he profiteered from that. People are not really liking that and they're having a hard time to, to digest that from him. But I think his move is, is sound because he probably remembers what happened in 2008. Because in 2008, people got broke. But the people who had cash on the sidelines bought that cheap real estate in 2009, 2010. People with cash on the sidelines got in silver and gold and, and right before that spike in 2011. So that, that was a really prime time to have dollars ready, to have hot potato money ready was around 2008, 2009. Uh, and I'm sure everybody watching this knows what I'm talking about. Um, Personally, my my portfolio is industrial precious metals. Uh, I'm, I have a little bit of gold. I'm more into industrial precious metals. By the way, look at palladium. Isn't palladium? No one's talking about palladium. I've made some videos on palladium. I have a lot of palladium. I've been buying palladium for a very long time. And its chart, it had a great, it had a, a really good opportunity on the pullback. And it's just ramping up on a day like today when the market's selling off, palladium spiking. And that's probably because it's in a six-year deficit. There's not enough palladium to meet the demand. 
They're, they're being used in all kinds of new fuel cells and all kinds of new ways of energy production as a catalyst. Excuse me. It's not just about catalytic converters. It's being used in all different types of things. So I want precious metals that are hard to get. There's a limited quantity of them. They have a low market cap. Keep in mind, gold's market cap is like 12 trillion. I like to go for the ones that are a trillion and less. So silver's around 1.1, 1. 1, 1. 1.4 trillion on the market cap. There's a lot of upside there. And it's, it's, there's a lot of room for, for silver to jump up to the multi-trillions. Uh, same thing with, I mean, palladium and, and platinum are like hundreds of billions on their market cap. It's tiny, their market cap, but it's used so much. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, nobody's looking at platinum and palladium right now. I, I am. And so that's a place I want to be. In addition to my cash reserves, I also like the idea of Bitcoin uh, having some digital money on the side. Because the thing is, whether you agree or disagree with Bitcoin, or whether you agree or disagree with precious metals, it's not about number go up. Although I do think it's going to go up a lot. It's about having money, having purchasing power outside of the banking system. That's what it's about. And that would keep them in check. It's about having leverage. If you let them have full control, if you buy into an ETF or something like that, you keep them on a drip feed. And I don't want that. I want, the, the, I want people to have their, their uh, custody is what matters. Custody solves the corruption problem. You know, if you have custody of your assets, that's a good thing. So that's something that I always push. If people are going to be in precious metals, like I've had people try to try to, for, for me to advertise for like this blockchain based precious metals. I'm like, no, they, people shouldn't trust you with their gold and silver. They should own their gold and silver in their own safe or wherever they want to keep it. Don't trust. I don't want to trust some vault in some other country. I'm like, no, I don't believe in this. You could pay me 10 grand. I still wouldn't do it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not about that. Um, so what am I doing? So a lot of people ask, like, what are you doing? I know a lot of people talk doom and gloom, but what are you doing personally? I think the best thing you can do is make your own money printer, find a way to have cash flow coming in. So if you have a business, if you have something like that, where you have your own money printer, the dollar store changes price from a dollar to a dollar 25 because they have their own money printer. They can change the prices. Inflation's up. Well, my money, my prices change. You have a restaurant inflation's up. Well, guess what? A steak went from 20 bucks to 25, 30 bucks now. Inflation's up. I have to change my prices. It is what it is. So you have your own printing press and you can change your prices and you have cash flow to buy these safe haven assets with that cash flow and you don't have to gamble with the amount that you have. Like it's like a, I don't like that whole mentality of going, I have a hundred grand. How do I turn it into a million? How do I do it? It's like, well, you take that hundred grand, you put 50 of it, you know, in reserves and you take the other 50 and you build a business. And with the reserves, you may buy a little bit of silver, may buy a little bit of platinum, a little bit of palladium, a little bit of Bitcoin, but you got to build something with it. I don't like that idea of taking this much and then figuring out some way to turn it 10 X or whatever. I mean, people get lucky from time to time, but I, I believe in building stuff and to get this economy moving back again, we have to have people building stuff, whether it's a Bitcoin or whether it's a precious metals individual build stuff on top of holding that. Um, but safe haven assets, um, a, a dollar position. And then on top of that building stuff as well. So that's what I'm doing personally. If you want to know more about the stuff that I'm building, follow me on Instagram. There's going to be some announcements there pretty soon about the, my company and what I've been building behind the scenes. Um, I don't like talking about it. I don't have like links to my what I'm doing right now, but I'll, I will probably make the announcements on my Instagram in the future because it's a, it's a good platform to do that. But at Rob Soltan on Instagram, follow me there. And there's a lot of cool posts and whatnot. I've been very active on the Instagram. You can DM me there as well personally, so that's pretty cool. Um, and it gives me another platform to kind of keep... Diversif diversifying things anyway. But overall, I I'm hearing a lot of like non news on the Fed. And that's what this, this is supposed to be a Fed update and what I I'm doing to prepare for the Fed update. But I, I hear a lot of people talking and, and the truth is, this is the real truth. And I'll go live again tomorrow to go over this. But it's a non event. It's a non event. They're not able to do anything. If, if they really cared if they really wanted to do the right thing, they would have to raise the rates higher than their CPI data, which is already artificially low. The CPI data is, are, in my opinion, in my personal opinion, disclaimer, artificially low at 7%. It's, that's low. It, it, to me, I think if they took off the artificial cap, they would be, you know, 14, 15, 16%, maybe even over 20%. If they took off these artificial hand-picked numbers and they used the CPI that they used back in the 80s, that CPI under Paul Volcker was a lot different. And that's when they raised it up to 20%. They did the right thing, caused a recession, caused a market sell-off. It was really rough, but you know what? They did the right thing. And the next, I think it took three years and from like 1980 to 1983, they got it down to 3%. It was up to like 14 point some odd percent, 14.8% in 1980. And then they got it to drop down 
to 3% in 1983. And that was by they, what they had to do is when it was almost 15% on inflation back then in the 80s, they had to raise it to 20%. They had to raise it to 20% to stop a similar, a similar inflation that we have right now. They had to put it at 20% back then. And they're talking about like there's all this anxiety in a, in a lofty overinflated market about them raising it a mere 0.25% or 0.2 whatever percent. That's nothing. And they say, oh, we're going to raise it four times. It's like how much are you raising it each time? It doesn't matter if you're raising it a mere 0.2% or whatever every time. If it, 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 if they're going to raise it at the end by the end of the year to not even one percent, and then by the end of next year not even two percent or two three percent, like it's like this isn't this isn't going to even stop the inflation rate. They would have to jump it up to ten percent to even make a dent on the inflation rate that is growing out of control. And then you got like the you know the president whatnot going like, hey, I need help with the inflation rate. What? There's nothing they can do. There, do you understand economics? Like there is nothing they can do. They've used all the tools in their tool chest. They've bought $8.8 trillion worth of assets. They've flooded $14 trillion into the economy. They have the rates at zero currently. They're still doing QE currently. They've done nothing, and they can do nothing. All they can do is pray that people don't watch a Rob Soltan live stream. <laughs> Seriously. Please, please, shut him down. Shut him down. Shut him up. We can't have him doing this right now. He's showing real data. Can't do this. He's doing it live. Oh, God. Oh, God. Please don't subscribe to him. Don't click that subscribe button. Don't click the bell afterwards. Please don't do that. Don't follow him on Instagram. This guy, he doesn't even have any advertisers. No. He doesn't have a course to sell you. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. Dear God. <laughs> but what are they going to do tomorrow? Oh, we're going to raise it. Hey, guys, listen. Uh, we're going to raise it 0.25%. The unemployment, despite the spike to over point, like it was over 14.9, despite this spike here, on the unemployment, despite the velocity of money tanking down to pretty much nothing, oh, the economy's fine. You know, things are things. People are not scared. They're they're going to start getting back into the economy. People are going to start spending money again. It's all. This is what Powell's going to say tomorrow. I'm just giving you a heads up. We'll give you a little prediction. He's going to say, "Oh, everything's fine. People are people are fine. You know, people are going to start spending money again." Well, guess what? The velocity of money is down to here. I mean, 2008's velocity of money was higher than it is right now. When there, we had a real market correction, this is, was the velocity of money back then. This is the recessions here. And keep in mind, this wasn't a recession. This was just the shutdowns here. We haven't had another gray yet. This was the last, the gray is recessions. So the, the actual movement of money, which basically is how tight people are being with their dollars, was higher than it currently is right now, mid-recession. In the recession, it was higher than it is right now. And Powell has the audacity to go on these, these you know, C-SPANs or whatever and say, everything's fine. Nobody is, uh, is you know, everybody's going to start spending again. The economy's going to come back. Everything's good. It's like, uh, does that look good? That, that looks to me like people aren't spending their money. The dollar index going up like this prior to him talking, that doesn't look like people are, are looking to spend their money. It looks to me like people are holding dollars. It looks to me like people are selling their equities. When I see the NASDAQ falling down like this, it looks to me like people are selling their equities they're going into the dollar and they're holding their dollars and they're not throwing them around. That's what the real data shows me, Powell. That's what the real charts. I know that they're not very technologically advanced, so they don't really show these charts during those streams. He goes to a podium like my little thumbnail, clickbaity thumbnail, and he sits there and he basically talks about nothing. Uh, but this is the real information here. Um, then we go to the historical inflation. It's obvious that inflation is way out of control. And it's not just about it being, and again, this is their artificial number in my personal opinion an artificial CPI, but the fact that they went from 1.36 to 7%, it's the multiple. It's the hundreds of percent year over year is what I'm looking at because even in peak inflation of the 80s, there wasn't that kind of a year over year. There wasn't that kind of hundreds of percent gap up. If it gapped up at the same rate that it did, I mean, we're talking this is like a 5X gap up. If it did a 5X gap up here, you'd be talking about going to a 45, 50% inflation rate. It didn't gap up 5x like it did from our year over year here. If it did another year over year, if it did another 5x like that from 1.36 to 7 point some odd percent, you're talking about inflation at 35%. And that's and this is using their CPI that is far different than the CPI that they used back then. So, I mean, that's just, it's just scary to me. I, I, this, this is absolutely wild that not enough people are talking about this but again the, the fact of the matter is they've used all the tools so this is the tool in their tool chest is buying assets they've bought 8.8 trillion of them they bought 8.8 trillion worth of the assets they flooded 14 trillion into the economy that's tool number one 
then tool number two is putting rates at zero. They've already done that. So all they can do, like literally all they can do right now is make rates negative. Like that's literally, if they want to, if they want to have a way to kick the can down the road, the only tool left in their tool chest is to make negative rates. And this might be a prediction. This might actually happen. Maybe somebody clipped this. I, I got to have a clips channel or something. That'd be cool in the future, but I have no editor. I just do things unscripted. There is no prompter, uh, but teleprompter, but um, basically the only tools that they have left. And so I'd argue that this is a possibility. Now, if you wanted to be bullish on equities and you wanted any type, you wanted to grasp at any type of straw of what Powell could do to get himself out of this, there's only a few possibilities. One of those possibilities is Yellen making trillion dollar coins out of thin air because they somehow managed to put that into the legal code. I have no idea how, but they did. I made a video on that. If you go to my channel, if you're subscribed to the channel, if you're not subscribed to my channel, there's a red button. It's like right around there. You click the red button, you click subscribe, and then you click the bell afterwards. And I appreciate it. That's all I care about. I have nothing to sell you, but if you did that, would really hype me up. I'm trying to grow my channel. We just broke 25K and I've been telling everybody, I'm telling the universe, I'm getting to 100K by 2022. If I somehow survive all of this and, you know, and my channel is still around by 2022, I'm getting 100K. It's going to happen. I'm getting, because I like silver. I'm a fan of silver and it's a silver plaque. You know, so if it's a silver plaque, I got to stack that. I want I want to stack that. I want to put it somewhere around here next to my monkeys of parliament. I would like a silver plaque somewhere in there at the 100K. That's what I'm, I'm putting that in the universe. So if you help me get there, if you hit the subscribe, that's all I care about. And I'm hyped that people actually want to listen because it helps me vent. You guys are my therapists. Everybody watching this, we're, this is a therapy course. These live streams are therapy for me. And also I, what bums me out is I'm ranting. I'm ranting right now, but the comment sections in my live streams are rad. I don't, I don't have any moderator. So there's the comment sections are completely unmoderated and it's all real people that, that care about the economy. And there's so much good stuff in there. Stuff where I might say something that, that is wrong or somebody disagrees with it. And I look back and I go and watch that. I look at the comments on these live streams. And I'm like, Oh, that was a really good point. I should have brought that up. I was actually always wrong there. So it's the comment section and it being live like that and having no filter is really awesome. I believe in having no filter. I believe in people's ability to, uh, you know, speak up and say whatever they have to say, whether they don't like me, don't agree with me. The comments are totally open. They don't, lim I don't limit any comments. So the comments in my live streams are really, really cool. Uh, and a lot of information is, is said there in addition to what I'm saying. And so often better information too. So it's like, it's really good. And it's also good to keep me in check because if I'm saying something off or something like that, it's good to do it live. But when you look at the real data here, I hope that this kind of opens up people's eyes that are worried about the report tomorrow because it, the, th the thing that's bad is it's an anxiety trip. I, I said in the last live stream, I'm, I'm, I'm telling people, it's like when you know when the kid is getting the, this is the perfect analogy for this. You know when a kid is getting their ear pierced, you got it like some, some young girl, some young, uh, I don't know if boys get their ear pierced, but young girl getting her ear pierced and this, this girl might be like five years old, four years old or something. And they have that little ear piercing thing. And there's this anxiety trip like, oh, did they do it yet? Did they do it yet? Oh, they're going to, they're going to do it. Okay. And it's like the Fed is sitting there and they're just holding it. there, like, oh, we're going to do it. Oh, we're going to, we're going to do it. And the kid's just sitting there crying, like, please just, just do it already. Please God, put the earring in. Oh God. And it's just like sitting there like pressuring and the, there's just this sweat going on. And it's like, why are you doing this anxiety trip? Just raise rates or don't period. And the only tool in their tool chest. And I was, I forgot to say this. If you are bullish on equities, if you want to know what can the fed do to somehow make the money printer go burr to somehow still do this again, they would have to Keep QE going. Say, hey, we're going to, we've already injected $14 trillion. That's a real number. They've injected $14 trillion in the last two years. Yep, they actually did that. That's nearly half of the country's deficit in two years. Yeah. $14 trillion. Like, we didn't even use the word trillion back in like 2007, 2006 and stuff. It wasn't even like a term. But to go two, two, $14 trillion. What are you going to do? You're going to do another $14 trillion? You're going to do another $20 trillion? That would just dilute the dollar dramatically. So they would cause inevitably a currency collapse after that. So, that, But to get them out of this mess, to get the can kicked down the road, they might do that. They might keep the QE going. If we have a market correction, the Powell will come out there and go, look, we said we were going to raise rates. But actually, and mark my words on this, they might do negative rates. I believe this happened in the UK before in the past. They might do negative rates and they might literally 
making negative rates is literally begging banks to take money from them. Is going to the commercial banks, being the central bank and saying, look, please take this money from us. We will give it to you for negative interest. We just need to get rid of this crap. Please take it. That's what negative rates are. And they might just do that because really when you, when you pull up the chart, you see that this, was a, this is a tool in their tool chest. To, in 2008, we're going through a market collapse. They dropped the rates right when we're in the recession. So the, the rates were up at 5.227%, a little bit, literally, yeah, 5.27% it was on, on July 18th, 2007. That was the percentage back of the federal funds rate back then. We go into a recession and they immediately start dropping that as a tool in their tool chest. And then they dropped it. I got to move me again. They dropped it all the way down to where it is now, to zero. That's what they did. They, they pulled it down to zero and then basically, and it's actually not even as low as it is now. Like, so anyway, it's, it's lower than it was in the midst of a serious market collapse. And this is prior to circuit breakers and everything too. So this is a serious market collapse and they only bought $2 trillion worth of assets. Now they've used both of those tools and there hasn't been a recession yet. This is not a recession. So there's no recession. They've already bought way, like 4X more assets they bought in the mid, in mid recession. Keep in mind, this is like if this happened here. This is literally if, like it happened here, but it's already happened. So they already, this is, they haven't used the tools yet. We go into recession, they use both the tools and you see that inverse there, right? You see them buying assets with the red line and you see them dropping the interest rates with the blue line. They've already had that. It's like the most severe inverse ever. And we've, we haven't even gone through a recession. If anything, we're at this ridiculously lofty level in the stock market due to them buying all these assets. And what are they going to do? They're going to sell these assets. They can't afford to sell these assets. It's, it's, it, they can't get rid of them. So if they tr if they try to, because what they're talking about, they're not just talking about you know the um, stopping QE. They're not just talking about stopping the printing press. What goes over a lot of people's heads is they're talking about quantitative tightening. There's quantitative easing, which is them printing and printing and printing, but quantitative tightening is them getting rid of those 8.8 .8 trillion worth of assets, mortgage-backed securities, all that stuff, and putting it back into the market, which is basically diluting the market with what they bought from the market. They bought it off the market, and they made the market artificially go up, and then they take that artificial buying that market up and flood it back into the market. And if they do that, they can't afford the rates. Like If they do, if we go through another repo situation, you're talking about... I mean, credit card rates through the roof, auto loans through the roof, house loans through the roof, all the all interest rates through the roof. And by the way, banks are getting 0% loans right now, but did your credit card rate change? No, no, no. They didn't change because the risk is still there and they still keep those rates really high. So people's rates are the same, you know, and with credit cards, but they, they get 0% loans from the Fed right now. They might even get negative loans if the Fed tries to kick the can down the road even further, but it's very scary because the real data isn't out there. And I try to give the real data on my channel as much as I can. And people call me out if I'm, if I'm crazy, which I have been called before in the past. Um, let me know, tell me, but I mean, I want to just do these live streams, get this information out there. And I'm just going to keep it like, like this title. People, people get very like, um, with a long title and whatnot. I, I do the clickbaity thumbnail. And by the way, thumbnails are all done by yours truly. So if you like those clickbaity thumbnails, that's all me. That's all me. I have nobody doing that. I do them all myself. <laughs> Taught myself how to be a graphic designer over these to make clickbaity thumbnails. But I mean, I just am going to put Fed update. Just make a small thing, put it out there, see what happens. But I just want to keep putting these in, these videos out there as long as I'm allowed to and talk about the real information on this channel. So if you if you resonate with this, please do click that subscribe button and the bell afterwards. Uh, it really does help the channel. We're at 25K. I'm trying to get to 100. I'm not trying. I am going to get to 100K in 2022. I'm just making that promise. It's going to happen. As long as I'm able to put videos out, I'm going to get to 100K because I want that silver plaque. The silver plaque is going to look real nice next to that little monkeys of parliament up there somewhere. I'm going to put it in that realm anyway. <laughs> That's my plan. That's my plan at least. But, and also if you're not following me, I said this already in the video like four times. I know it's annoying, but if you hit the like button, really, really helps these video get, get out there. If you want this video to get out there in the algorithm, uh, somehow it's our, our way of hacking the algorithm is by hitting that like button because it does get these videos out there to a lot more people when I do that. Um, when I say that at least. So 
If you could be so kind, if you're in here, if you're in the live feed and there's some information that actually provided value to you, I have nothing to sell you. I spent the entire morning studying all of this. I spent, I mean, obviously like a long time studying all of this, but pulling up these charts and going into the details and whatnot. Um, all I ask is if you hit that like button, turn it from gray to blue. Really, really appreciate it. But tomorrow, I mean, if I was like, in that position. And now I bring up that analogy of like trying to, you know, give a, a piercing to a kid or whatever. And the kids just sitting there and they don't do it. They just, Oh, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. You get this. They don't rip the bandaid off. The wound is there and they just don't rip the bandaid off. And if they rip the bandaid off, it'd be fine, but they keep pouring salt in the wound by making this anxiety trip. And not only do they make it an anxiety trip, they're making it an anxiety trip to do nothing. Like it's a, it's, it's like the funniest thing to me. It's like a pitcher, like sitting there on the mountain. He's like, I'm going to throw a speedball i'm gonna throw it and then just goes like uh, just drops it on the floor and it's like well what the, what was that whole like shaking motion for what was the whole like you were gonna wind up and throw a hundred mile an hour pitch you just barely dropped it on the floor you did nothing what do you mean you're not gonna do anybody stood there not only that but like stood there shaking this ball for like a year oh we're gonna throw it we're gonna throw it oh we're gonna throw it fast yeah we are nope uh, it's like dude what are people anticipating here they said they're going to raise it 0.2 whatever percent. And imagine this. Imagine they do say they're going to raise rates, right? They say, hey, we're going to raise rates. We got to do the right thing. We're going to raise it measly 0.2 whatever percent. And the market sells off. Then what? Then what if the earnings report from Tesla tomorrow doesn't come in good? And at the same time, they say they're going to raise rates a measly whatever percent. And at the same time, CPI is at 7% right now. Look, if you want a crash course in economics, you have if you have a consumer price index at 7% and you're going to raise it, 0.2 to whatever percent, do you think that stops the CPI? If inflation is growing from 1.4% and in less than a year goes from 1.4% to 7% and you're talking about raising rates from 0% to 0.24 or whatever percent, is that going to stop this from growing higher? No. It's going to drop it down, not even anything. It's going to keep going up. And so what they have to do is they have to outpace this and they have to get it up to 10% to bring it down. But they won't do that because that'll shock the system and bring down this artificially high stock market. And so, I mean, I can only imagine the position that Powell's in right now. Well, actually, I could imagine he's gotten filthy rich off of our money. There's that. So what he did is he bought those securities that they ended up buying with our money. So when you look at this chart that I bring up here, when you look at the $8.8 .8 that they bought, what Powell did, which is so kind of him, is he actually bought assets here. He bought, he bought securities here, knew what they were going to buy, and then pumped our money into it and then sold out of those and said, ooh, we probably shouldn't have done that. Oh, we probably at the Fed, we probably shouldn't be buying the securities that we bought with the other people's money and then dumping it back on. And we shouldn't have done that with our own money. It's like, what? What? How did we let them get away with that? They're not even a government-controlled entity. They're an extra entity outside of our... Like, how did this entity even exist? What is this? This is the most crazy thing I've ever seen. Am I living in a simulation? Probably. This is pro Elon Musk is probably right. It's got to be a simulation. For it to be this, like, it's like, what is this? Is the dream that I have the real life and this is a simulation? Because this doesn't... Up is down, down is up. Common sense is uncommon. And it, it really bothers me at this point. Like, I'm just... How much common sense is in the world? I think common sense is like the most uncommon thing ever now. And I hope I bring a little bit of it on my channel. That's my plan on, on this channel is to at least bring a little bit of common sense to the platform as long as I'm allowed to. If you can be so kind to hit the subscribe and hit the like, it does get this video out to more people and maybe that'll keep it going. And I'm trying to get this, this channel as big as possible. And if you follow me on other platforms, that really helps as well. So if you're not following me on Twitter, I'm on Twitter as well. Just look up Rob Soltan on Twitter, Rob Soltan on Instagram. Um, I post, I'm starting to post a lot on the Instagram. So please do follow me there because then I have a little bit of diversity going on and, and that helps um, to get this information out there. And again, if you've watched this video for the past, we've been live for about an hour now. You can tell that I'm not selling you anything. I'm just, I just want to just call them out. <laughs> That's really my plan is just to call them out. And I got nothing to gain from it. Just call them out and make these videos. If I'm saying something that you resonate with again, please do help this video get out there to more people. That's all I ask. And I'm asking this fly right here to go away. <laughs> anyway, Anyway, let's get to some of these comments in here. And Nigel, Nigel Scott, I've noticed this guy, Nigel Scott. I'm looking at the comment section now. This whole time, sorry guys, I was I was I was in full blown rant mode for the last hour. I haven't been looking at the comments, but I'm looking at them now. Um, we'll go, let's let's start. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, I hope I didn't miss any super chats in here. Sometimes, let me actually, I can scroll all the way up. Here we go. All right, we're good. We're good. 
Not that I expect it. I just don't like missing it. I feel if somebody gives those, I don't want to miss your comment. But uh, I, I never miss those when they do come in. So if they do miss them, shoot me in and DM on Instagram or something. Hey, man. But Nigel, I want to give a shout out to Nigel Scott. Nigel Scott's always saying, like, hit the like buttons. Make sure you subscribe. Same thing with Zane up in here. I see Zane in here as well. I appreciate you guys. That's rad. Um, where do you see gold going end of year? I don't like to put predictions out there. I'm not a guru. But my thing is, I think gold is like the slowest rate horse in the race, but it's a horse in the race, and it's going in the upward direction. That's what I think. I don't think... Excuse me. Um, you know, I'll, I'll actually give you some real information. I'll give you like a broad picture here, but it's real information. So I, I'm a full-time precious metals dealer. If you don't know that, I, I own Mineral Exchange. So there's that. So I just want to put that out there so you know that there's a bit of a bias there. But I believe in precious metals quite a bit. But I also believe a lot in Bitcoin. I'm a big fan of Bitcoin, as you can tell. If you put all of Bitcoin, you put all of precious metals in the same basket, right? That's You're talking about a basket of less than $15 trillion. Like, seriously. I mean, based on how much money that Powell printed over the last two years, you could literally have bought silver off the market. Like, literally. Like, multiple times. Like, silver is one point some odd trillion, 1.1, 1.4 trillion in that range. Powell literally could have bought silver off the market, like, four times. Like, for how much money he printed. But you take, so that just puts it into perspective. You take platinum, you're talking about a couple hundred billion on the market cap. You take palladium, a couple hundred billion on the market cap. Gold, you're talking about 12 trillion, 10 to 12 trillion on the market cap. You take Bitcoin, less than a trillion. I think it's like seven, seven, six hundred billion or something right now on the market cap. You take all of that together, you're talking roughly 15 trillion or less. Roughly 15, 15 trillion or less, right? There are hundreds and hundreds of trillions of dollars in assets worldwide. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trillions of dollars. I believe the number is being somewhere around 1.3, 1.4 quadrillion. So if you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of trillions of dollars in bonds, I mean, who's buying a bond? A bond doesn't even pay you 2%, not even 2 3% on a bond. Like who is going to want to tie up their money for 10, 20, 30 years in bonds right now with the, this state of the market? Who is doing that? What fool wants to lose money? Like literally, you are losing over 5% if you trust their artificial CPI numbers. If you, if you go over the real numbers, it's like you're talking 15%. But I mean, it, who is put up, who's buying a bond? So if the entire bond market, if all of these assets worldwide goes into safe haven assets, which I think what's happening is all those hundreds of trillions, when you talk about a quadrillion, which is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trillions out there, I think that money is getting taken out of the equities market and putting into the actual cash position, being put into the dollar, like literally spending money in the bank dollars, cash, and they're looking to flood that money into the safe haven assets at the right opportune moment. And that could include real estate as well. But I think that this, those safe haven assets, the fact that it's under $15 trillion, that people think that it's like a, a com competitive game between Bitcoin and gold, it's like, no. It's about all of that money flooding into the safe haven places. And the places, when I say safe haven, I mean assets outside of the banking system. If you have a silver bar in your safe, you have an asset outside of the banking system. If you have a Bitcoin in your cold storage, not on Coinbase, not on Robinhood. And by the way, Coinbase and Robinhood, not doing too well right now. Imagine they don't really do too well and they don't have solvency and you can't even get your Bitcoin out from them. What if they don't have the Bitcoin to send from their cash from Coinbase into, into a cold storage? These are the types of things I like to warn about. It's like, mate, I, I have this bad re reoccurring dream of like lines six feet apart trying to get money out of a bank that's closed down and doesn't have the money to give you. That's what I see. I see that in my mind. I remember in 2008 when the, the apps weren't working, when people couldn't use the TD Ameritrade app, people couldn't call in because their phone lines were off the hook. Like you couldn't sell your stock. So, and now they have circuit breakers in place. So you can build that dam of people wanting to sell their equities. That trust funnel is a scary, scary trust funnel. And it just blows my mind that people don't realize how important it is to have safe haven assets right now. If you're lucky enough to have dollars ready and powder dry, it's so important. I, I, I'd have anxiety if I didn't have my safe haven assets, if I didn't have money outside of the banking system. Again, it's not about, it's not about do I think gold is going to 5,000 at, at whatever point. It's that I believe in having a gold bar in my pocket and having gold in my safe or silver in my safe or, or Bitcoin in my cold storage because it's money outside of the banking system. It's purchasing power outside of this crazy trust funnel. And I, I, when I say trust funnel, again, I will go over that one more time in this video. 
if there's a situation like 2008, the market starts selling off, they would go through a circuit breaker where it hits the 7% circuit breaker and the market stops. They would stop trading altogether at 7%, right? Circuit breaker hits at 7%. Then there's this dam that builds up of people wanting to sell their equities. Phone lines off the hook, apps could be shut down, that kind of thing, like Robinhood only allowing you to sell GME or whatever. You have that halt. So then you're trusting that this, this you know, the trust right there is that these exchanges which is TD Ameritrade, Robinhood, E-Trade, whatever it is, has the solvency or even has your equity. Hopefully they have your equity because you don't have custody of your Apple stock or your Tesla stock. You think you do when you look at your phone, but you're trusting that TD Ameritrade has that amount of stock they're holding for you. They are your custodian. They hold the stock. You don't have access to it. They do. You're trusting them to get your stock. So you hope that they have your stock and they hope and you hope that they allow you to sell that stock at the right time. And you hope that the market's even open and not halted to sell the stock. So there's that. And so there's that huge trust at the very top of that funnel there. Then you're, if you're lucky enough to get it out of that funnel, you go to the next stage and you hope that you can get to the bank. You hope the, the other thing is the Fed wire system. You know how outdated the Fed wire system is? It already did shut down in the last couple of years here. Remember that day the Fed wire system didn't work? I do. I remember I couldn't send out a wire that day because somehow the Fed wire system shut down. People can't even comprehend how serious that is. It's one node. It's one outdated node that is the most outdated, foolish system of payment I have ever seen in my entire life. The fact that you have to document, oh, this is the business name. That's the business address. That's the account number, the routing number. Here's the name. Here's like to go through that whole process, drive to the bank, sign all that crap. It's wild to me that this is the system that we have where Bitcoin, you just copy, paste, boom. I see Bitcoin as an advanced wire system that puts it outside of the banking system. It's like, oh, that's brilliant. That's the, if you look at, if you look at it like a digital wire system, you go, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Like I want money that's digital that I have full access to and I have all the codes to it and I have a system that can't be shut down and I don't have to trust a one Bitcoin system is thousands and thousands of nodes. The Fed wire system is one node that is centralized. You're talking about thousands and thousands of nodes. So obviously that wire system is way better than the Fed wire system. That's why I believe in Bitcoin and cold storage. I don't believe in Bitcoin in a Robin hood. I don't believe in Bitcoin in a Coinbase, but when you know how to take it into your own cold storage, it's like, that makes sense to have 10% on my balance sheet. It, my position's a lot higher because I bought in so early, but I, it makes a lot of sense because it's purchasing power outside of that system. But the trust funnel I was talking about, so you're trusting that the bank is solvent and you're trusting again that the Fed wire system works, that you can get it from the stock market into the bank. Then you're hoping that the bank is solvent enough to give you that cash. And then you're hoping that the cash is solvent enough that it's not crashing, that the dollar isn't crashing itself. That's wildly diluted already. So it's like that trust that you have to deal with, the layers of trust in that is like, why would I ever want to be involved in that? That's why 401ks exist so it can lock up that money and get people not to get out of that trust system, get them forced into that trust funnel right there because you don't have, you're not the custodian anymore. People who have the 401k, I feel bad for them because they're not the custodian of their assets. They have too much trust and trust is where corruption thrives. That's where it is. Where, what is the source of corruption? When you think about it, the source is trust. When you trust somebody, that gives the opportunity for corruption. For example, an ETF, you're trusting that SLV holds your silver. You don't under, most people don't understand that it's JP Morgan that holds that silver and has it in their vault and has full access to all the information. And they're the ones shorting it and keeping and suppressing the price of silver. Just my personal opinion. Disclaimer. All this information is my personal opinion. Not a financial advisor, not a financial advisor, just a YouTuber. Probably wrong, probably wrong. This is probably all wrong information. Uh, just disclaimer, disclaimer. We're still live, still live. Ooh, sweet, sweet, we're good, we're good. Um, but that's, uh, to get to the, the, my personal opinion on where corruption runs rampant is when you trust. So how do you stop corruption? You become the custodian, Period. That's where corruption stops. The only way to halt corruption is when you have the power. And not only do you have the power, we the people have the power. Decentralize. That's where corruption gets stopped. Is when the every individual goes to their bank and says, look, I want all my money. Look, guys, I want my money and I'm, I don't even want to put it in your system anymore. I want it in my own place. I want silver in my vault. I want gold in my vault. I want Bitcoin in my own cold storage. I don't like this system anymore. I want a different one. 
That's to me is where you put that leverage on them because if more people take the money out of the market and put it into a safe haven place or put it in a, I think maybe safe haven might not be even the right word. I think it's a safe haven, but I think the overall word is, is capital outside or capital and purchasing power outside of the banking system. That's what I say. So if more people take their capital and put their purchasing power outside of the banking system, that is when you have leverage to say, look, you guys got to raise rates. All right. We're not putting my, we're not putting the money back in the system unless you guys raise rates and start acting right. This doesn't make any sense. Your system is flawed. We're sick of it. We're sick of the can, can kicking. We're sick of it. Doesn't make any sense. Yellen can make a trillion dollar coin out of thin air. And by the way, how did the ex fed chair of Yellen happen to become the secretary of treasury? Usually it doesn't work like that. I don't, I don't know how that happened. I don't like it. I don't like it. And they're also buddy, buddy. They're not supposed to be buddy, buddy. Like the, tre- the Secretary of Treasury is supposed to be sticking it to the Fed chair and, and keeping them in check. They're not supposed to be buddy-buddy, like sitting across in chairs and like, oh, if things don't really go too well, yelling, you'll throw a, a, a trillion dollar coin out of thin air, right? We've already printed 14 trillion. Can you make another 14 trillion little platinum coins for us? It's like, what? What is this circus show? Who cares what they have to say? It's a circus show. Makes no sense. So that... that I just, my thing is, while you can, just my personal opinion, could be completely wrong, not financial advice, just my personal opinion, could be completely wrong, I could be an absolute fool, I'm just saying this, uh, maybe I'm just talking in parody right now, who knows, who knows, maybe, could be, could be all sarcasm, disclaimer, could be a full-blown parody, not a financial advisor, not a financial advisor, but I would be taking all of my solvency out of the banking system and putting it into my own bank. I want to be my own bank. I don't want to trust anybody. I want to take away all trust from the banking system and I want to put it into the people's hands and that is the only way to have leverage ahead of them. Period. There is no other way. If you have your, if you have your Bitcoin in a, in a you know, Coinbase or something, that is not helping. If you have your Bitcoin in grayscale or you have some ETF, that is not helping. You should have it in your own cold storage. If you have your silver in an SLV vault, you're not helping. You're not doing anything. You should have it as a silver bar, physical silver in your own safe. If you have gold in a gold mining stock, maybe you want the leverage, maybe you've done a little bit of research and you think that they're going to hit it big or whatever, fine, maybe that's not a good example. But if you have it in a gold ETF, you're not helping anything. You're not putting the money in your own hands. You're not the custodian. You're trusting a custodian. You have too much trust. And why why is the entire banking system flawed? Why is the dollar, what has happened to the dollar to get us to this point? Well, I'll tell you, Roosevelt did it in 1933. He did the confiscation of gold, right? That was the first thing. But the real one that did it is in 1971, we had an agreement with all the countries worldwide. It was called the Bretton Woods Agreement. And we we basically told all the countries, look, we have most of the gold. We have two thirds of the gold. And you want a stable currency. This literally is the truth. If you look up Bretton Woods Agreement, right? If they ha- We had an agreement and we said, we got two thirds of the gold and here's what we're going to do. And this is what got us in this whole flawed mess that we're in. We hold it. We have the gold. We're going to let the whole world use the dollar as the reserve currency. And you can trust us. Keep in mind, I just was talking about trust being the foundation for corruption. Don't worry. You can trust us. We got two thirds of the gold. We'll give you these little pieces of paper and you hold these pieces of paper. We made them out of cotton and we put some cute ink on there. You take this piece of paper. All right. And then if you, if you want the gold, which you're not going to want it, you want these pieces of paper and these little divisible pieces of coins and whatnot, right? So here you go. Here's these coins. And oh, by the way, these coins are not precious metals anymore. They used to be. Our, our nickels were made out of silver. Our dimes were made out of silver. Our $20 gold piece was an ounce of gold, which is literally worth like $2,000, $1,800 to $2,000 now. But our, 20, our $20 bill is now $1,800. A $20 gold coin is now worth $1,800. So $1,800, $1,900. Why is that? Because the money was wildly inflated. But that's what our own tw- our $20 bill used to have in our purchasing power. If you want to know what inflation really does and what the Fed really did, you just look at an old $20 coin. If you go to my Instagram, I've posted a few of them. But the, a $20 gold coin is now $1,800 to $2,000. So that's where you really see it. So the money used to be gold and silver, but after 1971... Basically what Nixon did, and this is under Paul Volcker, this is, by the way, this is like right before major stagflation hit and then 1980s came and all that. Paul Volcker, I believe, was actually the secretary of treasury and was helping Nixon do this. 
I believe that is what happened there. But I believe it was Paul Volcker, actually. And then after that, Paul Volcker. So Paul Volcker had a key stake in getting us off the gold standard. So Nixon came out there and said, look, I know we had this agreement with all of you guys, right? I know you're all operating off the dollar, right? Well, guess what? We're keeping the gold. We don't even have enough really to pay you guys all back. And so if enough of you keep asking for gold, we're going to run out of gold ourselves because we overprinted and we don't have enough gold. So guess what? No gold, period. Could you imagine like you got your whole country to trust this? And then, yeah. that's what happens when you trust. You trust somebody to be the custodian. They steal it. There's always, it's happened time and time again. It's literally the definition of insanity. So f when I hear like uh, somebody in gold, I've heard, I've even heard Peter Schiff talk about this, like a blockchain based gold or whatever. It's like, no, I want no trust in any custodian period. I don't want to be your custodian. I don't want anybody else to be my custodian. I want to be the custodian. I want full control of my capital. I want to know where it is, wh what's going on with it. I want to know everything about where my capital is. And so I, I believe in no more trusting any custodian, period. If we stopped trusting custodians, the world would go back to an Austrian standard. That is what we need is an Austrian economic standard. I don't know why they teach Keynesian economics in colleges. I have no idea why they're churning that out. Well, I do, but I don't want to say it. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, it's, it's laughable. I remember going to college and having this economics professor trying to teach me economics. And it's like, I remember literally I dropped out after two years. I didn't even get my AA. Uh, I dropped out with 58 units done. I needed 60 units to get my AA. And I was so mad about that economics class that I was like, you know, what? I'm done with this. I'm out of here. I can't take anymore. I make more money as a waiter anyway. I remember that the whole logic that was going through my head is like, I make more money as a waiter than a college job could bring me anyway. But back then I remember them teaching about economics and I remember just sitting there being like, this is so flawed. Like you're teaching me how to cheat. That is pretty much what it is. Like the Keynesian way is like, how do we cheat? How do we cheat for all the tests? How do we do that? I don't know. Like, oh, well we can just print money out of thin air. Oh, we can get out of the bread and woods agreement. We can do whatever we want. Period. It's like, it's like when there is lack of order, there becomes chaos. And the hierarchy system becomes chaotic because it's, there's not order anymore. And so, and, and then in, in a situation like this, it's like literally, I said this in the last live stream too. If I was to play, just my opinion, disclaimer, just could be, a, this is a parody. This is a parody here. Uh, if I was playing a game of diabolical chess and I want, and my, my goal in this game of diabolical chess was to divide the poor from the rich and make the middle class back to, to poor and the rich uber rich, I would do literally exactly what is going on over the last two years. I would make them feel like a stimulus package is, oh, it's good, it's for you. Here you go, here's your check. Here you go, we just printed it out of thin air. Here's your check, we're here for you. Here you go, we're the gov, we got your back, here's your stimulus. And you'd make people feel good in the beginning of that diabolical game of chess. And this is literally like Sung Su Art of War stuff. If you read the book of, of Art of War by Sung Su, I highly recommend that book. It's a great book. But that was, I would be like the first step would be that. Be like, okay, print a bunch of money. Make them think printing a bunch of money is a good thing. Then after I'm done doing that, inflation starts going rampant. And in that entire time period, in the midst of that diabolical game of chess, I would say things like, oh, it's just transitory. This is just a transitory thing. We're here for you. We're printing this money for you. Are you in the stock market? Do you have a 401k? Look what we did for you. Look at that, right? That's what's going on. And so then they say, oh, it's transitory, it's transitory. Oh, guess what? It's not transitory anymore. We're expansionary is now the new term Powell's saying. We're expanding. He probably will see it. I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait till tomorrow to call him out. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm so excited for tomorrow's live stream. I'm going to go off on that one. I'm, I'm just excited to hear. I'm going to watch his entire thing. I, I don't know if I, I can figure out how to like have him i don't want to get a copyright or whatever but i've seen some people like live stream it i'm gonna figure that out i'm gonna get i keep i keep reinvesting in the studio here as you can tell i keep putting more and more money into my my st my set and getting better equipment and whatnot so eventually i'll be on like a meet kevin's level but just no i won't tell people buy these stocks and sell these stocks or whatever I'm, I'm planning to get on that level but i keep investing in my equipment that's what i'm doing here anyway I, I see him saying something like, oh, this we're getting used to this expansion and unemployment is back down low. Really? You really buy this chart here? You really buy when he says unemployment is back low and things are fine? Like, here's what happened. This is the real data here. You want to look at the real unemployment rate? The unemployment rate in 2010 was 9.8, right? It goes down, 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 down. And we were having an economy that was actually doing pretty well. So under the last, you know, leadership or whatever, I mean, it was doing pretty, it was decent. And then out of nowhere, we have this spike. 
when we have the pandemic, they have the shutdown. So obviously there's going to be a spike because they shut down everything. So we see a spike to 14.7. But here's the thing. I mean, it's it, obviously if you're if you're on the other side of this debate here, it makes a lot of sense that this is just, oh, it's a spike because they shut down everything. Well, there's a lot of things still messed up. To think that they shut down everything, we're in this type of a situation that we're in and that we're back down perfectly to those levels like we were before. I mean, I could imagine getting midway down and like recovering down to here. But to say that we're back to normal after that spike, I don't buy that. That is, there's, there is some trickery going on there. So I think the unemployment is really somewhere around here. And we're in a, a situation of stagflation where we have the difference between regular inflation and stagflation is very simple. It's this chart where I don't believe it's back down low. I believe that it's midway up that chart. But what I think is going on is that we have stagflation and I've made a lot of videos on stagflation. So if you're subscribed to the channel or if you're not subscribed, please do click the subscribe and the bell afterwards. And there's going to be a lot of videos on this even in the future. But if you go back to my videos on stagflation, I have, I've had the same sentiment even back in the stimulus package days. I've had the same st sentiment, but currently I've been talking about this a lot about stagflation and stagflation is when you have, it's far different than regular inflation, regular inflation, things cost more money, right? But stagflation is things cost more money. Inflation is up there, which we see at a 7% CPI, but also you have high unemployment at the same time. You have high inflation and high unemployment. And oh yeah, by the way, low economic production, which we see on the economic production chart. I don't think I've pulled up right now, but it's starting to slope. And I've gone over that in prior videos. So economic production is sloping, going down. You have high unemployment and you have high inflation that is getting out of control. And the feds already used all the tools away at the tool and tool chest. So stagflation, actually, last time I went through stagflation, silver skyrocketed, precious metal skyrocketed. So what I'm also looking for is a detachment. So powder on the side, having dollars on the side is one thing, but it could be wrong too. But it's kind of like an insurance play having the 20, 30% cash there because we might see a real detachment this time with precious metals. And we're starting to see a little bit of that with silver. So if the mar what I mean by detachment is a market correcting and going down and not dragging precious metals with it. We don't want to see a correlation with precious metals and Bitcoin to the stock market. We don't want to see that. You don't want to see the Dow plummeting and the NASDAQ plummeting and silver plummeting with it and Bitcoin plummeting with it. You want to see them going the opposite direction. People leaving equities, going into those safe haven assets and things skyrocketing in that way. But in 2008, you saw it all going down together and then it, it skyrocketed in 2011. So what I'm thinking about is if we get that detachment, that it's not going to be the same story from 2008. It's going to be a different story where it detaches and goes up. So that's kind of where um, I am right now. What I'm looking for, is that going to happen? I don't know. I think it's, I think it's like a 60% probability that it actually does detach and doesn't fall with the market. But because of that 40% is why I have powder dry and I have some dollars on the side waiting to throw it at the, and use it as hot potatoes. But the interesting aspect is everybody that's in the dollar right now, that's in the DXY, it is not due to trust. It's not due to people saying, I trust this. I want to be in the dollar. It's due to a lack of trust in the market that's been created by this artificial or everything artificial about this Keynesian model. So it's not a trust system why people are buying the dollar and why the dollar, like people ask me all the time, why is the dollar so strong? Why are you sitting in a dollar position? Because everybody sees it, including myself, as hot potato money. It's hot potato money. If you hold it for too long, it burns you. And it's obvious because 20, a $20 bill is now 1800 our old $20 coin is now worth $1,800, $1,900 in gold. It used to be an ounce of gold, our, own tw our old $20 bill. Inflation took its place. So it's, it's scary to me that, that not enough people notice this or see it, and I try to bring awareness on my channel. That's my goal. Um, and hopefully I help in some way. And if I do, if, I, if I've shed some light on some of these things, all I ask is that you click the subscribe button and help my channel grow a bit. Maybe tell a friend about the channel, maybe share it on a social media, something like that. Let it go on Facebook or Instagram or whatever it might be. I really, really appreciate people doing that and helping get the word out on my channel. If you want to follow me on Instagram, at Rob Soltan on Instagram, it's nice that I have a different platform there. That it's also, a, there's different things you can do on all these platforms in today's day and age. But let me go, you know what, there's... I think I missed a few of these comments here. Bite Hunter, I appreciate that. Thank you. I'll, I'll just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Let me go down. I never liked if you if you're so. I mean, that's that's really generous of you. If you do that, I I don't want to miss those comments. So I apologize for for taking a second there. I start to ramble a little bit, but I'm looking at the comments right now. Bite Hunter gave me a super chat of twenty bucks. I appreciate that. Bite Hunter it says, as long as you make the shared video, the shared video transformational, there should not be a problem. 
Oh, I appreciate that. So you're basically, you're, you're saying like, like I was saying, I'm, I'm going to get my channel to hundred K this year and I'm, I'm going to do that. Like if you see, I'm, I'm putting in the work, I've done like 10 videos in the last seven days, but mainly I also want to get this information out there at this specific time right now, because I think it's about to happen. But, um, I really appreciate you saying that. I appreciate that generosity. Thank you by, by Hunter. That means a lot to me. Uh, and right underneath that, we got silver dragons up in the house. What's up silver dragons. He says unemployment went up when people were, were being paid to stay at home. Uh, yeah, it did. But my, my argument, so that's the, that's the counter argument, which I agree with you. So this is an obvious spike due to that. My argument is, did it really recover from that big of a spike back down to there? Because there's, imagine how many, how many companies out there like got used to zoom, realized they didn't need the office building they were in. How many people like changed up their business model? A lot of companies changed their business models. A lot of my entrepreneur friends told me that they've got let off, let go of a lot of people because they didn't need them anymore. And a lot of people don't even want to open the offices back up. They just want to work remotely now. But this, to say that unemployment, my argument is not that it's here. My argument is that this was artificial, obviously from the shutdown, but I think that it's really somewhere around here. I don't, I don't think it's really had that big of a recovery. And if anything, I think it's going to start sloping and maybe start heading back up. That's my personal opinion, not to be taken as financial advice. I just don't think that that, I think that it's very artificial to say that it's it peaked to there and then it's just all the way back to normal levels right now. I, I just don't buy that. Um, that's my personal take. I think it's like the CPI where they look at certain numbers and they don't show the whole story of it. Um, but that's just, again, my personal opinion, but I, I respect you bringing that up. Um, Ring of Fire says, let's bring our brother up to 100K subs this year. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. I'm going to put in the work. I promise you. I'm going to put in the work. Nigel Scott up in the house. What time is the meeting? I actually, I, I got to look that up. I believe it's tomorrow afternoon with the Fed. Uh, it's funny. They said it was today and tomorrow, but there's no news today. It's really only tomorrow. But what's scary is, is that's where Tesla's earnings report's going on tomorrow. So we have all these big earnings throughout the week at the same time that they're going to say they're going to do something. And even if they do something, it's going to be a non-event. So it's just, it's just wild to me, the amount of anxiety in a market that has so much room to fall. It's like literally, like you know what this market is? If I was going to say an analogy, this market is literally this big, lofty, overinflated balloon sitting on a bed of needles. That's really what this market is. It's like, hmm, I think we're good, but we're on a bed of needles right now. Like, and, and the only difference is like, it just keeps inflating a little bit, but it's still on a bed of needles and there's no way to get the balloon to get off the needle. So it's just on the needles. And eventually one of the needles is going to do something. That's what I, I look at. If you look at the thumbnail, that's what I'm, the theme is like, it's like a balloon and it really is the entire economy and the entire, like the equities market is this big balloon that keeps inflating and inflating and inflating while it's sitting on needles. And at some point, something might happen. And like, that's how I look at it. Uh, Jimmy Ramirez, I appreciate that. He gave me five bucks. I appreciate you, Jimmy. Uh, says, hi, Rob. I'm new to investing in precious metals. I want to buy silver, um, but everything seems so overvalued. Any recommend, recommendations on to get, start, to get started? Um, I think just getting your first little piece of it. I mean, I remember when I first saw a silver bar for the first time, I actually held it in my own hand. So I fell in love with it. Like I, the first bar I ever saw was like, you know, an actual vault of my, my friend that's in the business as well and taught me the business. He, I saw this bar. And I'm like, you have like bank bars. I remember that movie, like Italian job remember when they stole the gold bars in that movie, Italian jobs, Italian job. It's like, a he, they had these little, these gold bank bricks and they had these in his safe. And I'm like, you have like the, the real bank bar brick. Like that's crazy. Um, so it's like, I think that just getting off of zero. Like with Bitcoin, for example, and with silver, it's like when you get off zero, you start thinking about how do I protect this thing? And then you start thinking about safes and get a TL30 rank safe and you get the cold storage, whether you're in Bitcoin or whatnot. It's like you, you start protecting your asset because you bought it and now, you, now you're invested. Once you're invested in something, then you start doing real research on it and you start studying it and you get more into it in that way. So I would say just get off zero and you don't, you don't have to go all in. Like people that say go all in, whatever, I don't think is the right thing. I think whether it's precious metals or whether it's Bitcoin or wherever it is or real estate or wherever you're putting that money or your business, I think going all in, well, business is different. All in on business is a different thing, but your investment into an asset. I think if people who say going, go all in is foolish, but I also think having none is foolish. So right now, if I had none, I would feel foolish. And if I was all in, I would feel foolish. So that's kind of where I am. I, I believe in having, um, 
cash flow and making sure your money printer is going, whatever that money printer might be. You might even be working, if you're working for somebody else, it's still a money printer. You still have money coming in. You have cash flow coming in. So find a way to have cash flow. And then after that, you start thinking about putting it in safe haven assets. And then after that, then you basically, I, I just, I still wouldn't go all in them. I would have powder dry, like I've talked about in this video, like 20, 30% dollars. But I think just getting off zero is the key. But I, I really appreciate that, Jimmy. Thank you, man. But there, I'm going to have some announcements on on my company and things that I'm doing on Instagram. So I will I will show that. I will show that. There's no links in the in down there except like my Instagram. So make sure to follow me at Rob Soltan on Instagram if you're interested in things that I'm doing uh, in that space. And so I just don't want to, I don't like to talk about it in my in my live streams, but Make sure you're following me on Instagram if you want to be updated when I'm dropping videos. I'm putting it in my story on Instagram. So like like this one, for example. Let me show you real quick. We go to Instagram. I got to move this. So here's my Instagram. Just so you guys know what I'm doing. Like if you want to be notified of videos on the channel. So here's my Instagram. I don't know if it's focused or not. Maybe back here. I don't know. So right there. But if you click the story... On my Instagram, you'll see that I give an update here and I, I put a link to my videos so you can actually be notified. Sometimes, sometimes YouTube isn't, sometimes YouTube isn't notifying people when my videos are live or what's going on. So that's like my way of taking a different action is to let people know when I drop a video and put a link there because those stories, they get a lot of views there. And so people can actually be notified on top of a notification. So make sure you subscribe, click the bell afterwards. You'll get notified hopefully from that. But if you don't, I put another notification there and that, that, like nine times out of 10 is actually a better notification source because it gives you a link directly to it. And it, it works really well that way. It's my way of kind of uh, hacking the algorithm, so to speak. But go through a few more comments. We've been live for an hour and 30 minutes. Wow. Our live feed lasted this time, everybody. We got shut down at like 45 minutes that on that one. So we're live. We're still going. We're saying so. I think it was the, all the disclaimers. I have to say disclaimer at least 50 times and we keep going on the live stream. Appreciate that man thing. It means a lot to me. If you put that out in the universe, it's going to happen. I believe in that. Eventually, there will be. There will be the 100K silver plaque up there, and it will happen. And it's, it's funny, like when, when somebody doubts me for some reason, like I actually appreciate the people that say like I, I did it on my Instagram. I did one of those polls recently where I was like, am I going to get to 100K in 2022? And I took a screenshot of all the people that said no. And I'm going to individually, this is, this is like my, this, if you want to know like my competitive nature of it's like, I'm going to individually DM all of the people. And there was like 20 of them. I'm going to individually message them when I hit 100K, every single one of them. Hey, I'm at 100K. Remember when you said no on that poll? Remember when you said that? Yeah, I'm here now. And, and by the way, I did. Um, I, 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 I saved that screenshot. I put it in the favorites folder of my iPhone. So just know that. It was like it was 90% people think I did and 10% didn't. And those 10%, I remember who you are. And I'm going to individually DM every single one of you in the future. Thank you for the inspiration. <laughs> people are saying AMC, GME, it's done. Uh... So, I mean, I hate to say told you so, but I mean, the thing, the good thing about YouTube is like when I'm wrong, there's people that can call me out on that. Like people can say, Hey, this video didn't age well. And I have some of them out there that didn't age well. You know, the micro strategy thing that, that didn't age well. Cause Bitcoin's down a bit. I think anybody that's leveraging their positions is a, it's a really bad move. Like Michael Saylor right now being that leveraged in Bitcoin, very scary for him to be doing that because when it pulls down, when you're not leveraged, you have the opportunity to sit on things for a long period of time when you have to pay an, an interest rate. So some people keep their precious metals in a depository, which I don't agree. I think that's a terrible idea. If you keep your precious metals in a depository, then basically uh, you're, you're paying 2%, one, one, 2%, and then you have, you lose that year over year gets chipped away out of your pile. So you have this n inflation type of situation on your asset. And when you have your, your Bitcoin in grayscale, for example, they take 2%. So they take a little, they chip away at your position. And then when you get, when you take loans to get more Bitcoin or take a loan to get more silver or whatever, you, you're now paying this interest rate to, to get that item that could force you into a liquidation event. I hate the idea of getting margin called or something like that. But anyway, 
What's beautiful about YouTube is you can go back in time and say, oh, wow, you were right about that. Oh, wow, you were wrong about that. You can see the actual thing. And that's what I love that I, I can post these. I never have deleted a single video. I just keep putting them out there. And I've had videos where I, you know, I talked about Bitcoin and everybody thought it was foolish back at 10,000 and the video is still there. And people call me a fool for being in Bitcoin now or whatever. And I'm like, I bought an insurance play. At when it was like 7,000, I was like, okay, I'll put five, 10% of my, my net worth in it as an insurance play. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, I'll be fine. And it worked still up at 36. Like it, it was a really good investment. Um, so I look at it the same way. Now, if I had no Bitcoin, I would still put five, 10% in it and consider it a very, very good insurance policy to have digital money outside of the, the, the system. I mean, silver can't be digitized. Gold can't be digitized as much as I believe in precious metals. It can't be digitized. So if you digitize it, you, you trust a custodian. That's the problem. I don't want to trust a custodian. So digitizing it is not possible. So I need to have some asset that is digital in addition to my physical. So that's how I feel. I want, and I look at Bitcoin, like it's this beautiful decentralized wire transfer service with all of these nodes. Keep in mind, the fed wire system has one node, the Bitcoin wire system. I'm going to call it the Bitcoin wire system. I, I like to make the analogy of, as I like to simplify things in a way. And I've always said, it's like a wire transfer. There's thousands of nodes. So the system is so much more elegant and it's just a copy paste. I don't have to deal with this crap at the bank where I have to get the account and the banking and the routing. Anyway, that's how I look at it. Um, Silver Dragons. Hey, I appreciate that, Silver Dragons. Thank you, man. Silver Dragons, also a great YouTuber, by the way. Uh, I really like your channel, man. Um, I've been subscribed to you for a while. He says, Rob Sultan, I believe in you, brother. I know... You can easily make it to 100K and beyond. And you gave me five bucks to say that, Silver Dragons. You're the man. Thank you, dude. I really appreciate that, man. Super cool guy. Appreciate that. It's nice to see other YouTubers in here as well, especially ones that I really respect. So appreciate that, man. All right, we got 704 likes up in here. And 15 dislikes. If you want to know how many dislikes, I don't know if you can see on your end. So we have 15, 704. Am I not supposed to tell people that? Am I not supposed to tell people that? I did. <laughs> uh, but I appreciate it, guys. I appreciate everybody for being in here. I appreciate everybody subscribing. Uh, but, oh, yeah, Philip was talking about AMC. But, I mean, the thing is, you have to know when you're buying something if there's an intention to to be with, for example, like when we talk about Bitcoin and altcoins is a good example. Like with Bitcoin, I've noticed with Bitcoiners, their intent isn't to buy something and then sell it at a higher price. Their intent is to rewrite a monetary system. A lot of them believe in sovereignty. A lot of believe, believe in literally the same thing. Like what's crazy to me is that precious metals people and Bitcoiners like bash when it's like you guys are all libertarian minded individuals that believe in a smaller government and less power to them, more power to the individual people. Why don't you both kind of become friends and realize that maybe you are a faster horse in the race, but you're all horses in the same race. You know, let's, let's come together a little bit. And that's what my channel is. I'm kind of like trying to bridge the divide. And that's not me saying, Hey, I'm all in Bitcoin. Or I'm all in silver. Or I'm all in gold. It's like, I, I believe in having a big, if I didn't put it this way, my Bitcoin position has gotten very large because I got in very early. So there's that. So I have that bias there. But I haven't sold any of my Bitcoin. Even back when it was at, at highs, I was still buying. I mean, like I look at it as it to me, it's an insurance play. It's an insurance play that I hope works. If it works, you're rewriting a monetary system and you have a safe haven asset in the digital realm, which is pretty beautiful if you think about it because you can't digitize a tangible. As much as I believe in tangibles, you can't digitize it because then you're trusting a, another entity to hold it for you. What happened when you trusted the government to hold all your gold and your silver? They stole it. They exited the Bretton Woods Agreement. Like it literally has a time and time again, every time you trust a custodian, they steal it. So if you can't digitize it, then you need something like Bitcoin that is the digital energy itself that you can store. So, but that doesn't mean that if I'm a precious metal stacker, I'm saying, oh, sell half your stack and put it into Bitcoin. Some Bitcoiners might say that. I believe that if I had, if I had no, I have to look at this like if I cleared my brain out and I didn't have a Bitcoin position, and I learned what I learned about Bitcoin and I'm in the position that I am right now. I would buy five, 10% and put it on that's my personal, not a financial advice thing. If I wasn't, if I own no Bitcoin, I'd have about five, 10% on my balance sheet right now as an insurance play. That's how I would look at it. I don't, I'm not the type of person being like, go all in, sell your house, buy big. Like this is what Michael Saylor was saying. I'm like, I like Michael Saylor. I think he's a smart guy, but the things he was saying some pretty wild stuff. 
Like he's saying, sell your house, get, make sure you don't have a mortgage, you know, leverage yourself, buy as much as possible. Like that, that is actually, I think a bad thing because it gives ammo to people that are anti Bitcoin. Like, and it's fair ammo too. It's like, you don't want to be leveraged like that. So you have to give, you can't just be, um, close minded. You have to know when you're wrong in a way. And in that situation, I think he's pretty wrong. You don't want to put yourself in a position where you have to sell something to be fine. You know, a lot of people, because of Bitcoin's pullback, like with me, if Bitcoin went to zero, my quality of life would not change. If silver went to zero, my quality of life would not change. I would still be, I'd be bummed, but my, I've set things in place where my quality of life wouldn't change. And that's what I would say on my channel. Make sure whatever investment that you're in, and this is not financial advice, but whatever investment you're in, in a way, it's like, make sure your quality of life doesn't change if it goes to zero, because it could. You know, I, I, don't, I doubt they, they will, but that's how I feel about it. And that's real information rather than saying like, leverage your house, get your things, <laughs> leverage everything you can, buy Bitcoin. Like, it's like, nah, I don't know about that. That's, and there's a lot of people that had to, and I've been joking on my Twitter. If you notice on my Twitter, I've been kind of joking around a bit. I'm like, all these leveraged traders just sold me Bitcoin for cheap that I'm going to keep in my cold storage at 0% interest. All, anybody that got sh uh, like shook out of silver from 30 down to tw the low 20s, I got cheap silver in my vault because that, because I wasn't leveraged and I didn't get scared and I kept holding it and now I'm in a good position. So it's like, that's, I remember when silver crashed to 12 at the beginning in March of March of 2020, I believe silver fell down to 11, 12. And I remember that the sentiment was just, everybody was freaking out. And I backed up the truck on like 10,000 ounces of silver. I even posted pictures of it back on my Instagram back in the day. Uh, but I bought so much silver at that, that point. And it's like, you can't even, you can't even mine it for that cheap. That's crazy. But when the sentiments change, there's so much opportunity in the market. And that's why I believe in having a bit of a cash position. Um, anyway, this was supposed to be a little fed update video, guys. You, you guys, you guys get me excited to do these live streams. Then I stay in the live stream and then boom, we're here for a long time. Um, but I appreciate everybody being here. And so I just keep staying here. I, was plan I literally was planning on doing like a 30 minute live stream. We're here for an hour and 40 minutes now. So if you're watching this at a later date. It is what it is. This video will be posted. All my live streams do get posted on the channel. And I also make sure the one thing I, I didn't realize that you have to actually click it. It doesn't do it automatically, but you have to click it on the back end to make it so that all of your comments don't go away on the later video. Because I think all the comments in these live streams are super valuable. And I, I did a, a live stream and the comments weren't there. I'm like, wait a minute. Those are really valuable comments. There's a lot of really good information in there that I want to go back and look at the comments. And I literally do. I don't, I don't like to watch myself, but I'll go and scroll through the comments and see what people were writing. And there's sometimes there's like 2,000 really, really good comments in there. And people put their voices out there. And I don't have a moderator, so all the comments are there. But I found out that I have to click a certain button in the back end of YouTube to make it so that when you watch the video at a later date, it shows all the comments there. And I don't want those comments to be deleted. I want them to be there. So I figured that out. And now I, I make sure that I click that every time I go live now. So uh, like seriously, there the comment sections, I go back to them every time. There's a lot of really good comments in here. There's a lot of people a lot smarter than me in these comment sections uh, that, that even make me that criticize something I say and then makes me, I have to double think about it and go, ah, I might have actually been wrong there. Like the real estate video I did, actually, there were some people that brought up some really good points because I think real estate's pretty lofty right now. And I think if they raise rates, it would cause in the, the rates on houses go up. But then also, I think that you have to, when you think about like what Yellen, this is kind of on topic in a way with the Fed and the Secretary of Treasury and stuff. When Yellen was talking about, you know, um, taxing unrealized gains, I mean, that makes you have no reason to be in the stock market anymore because they could tax unrealized gains. It's like, well, then you should just take your gain then because if they can tax unrealized gains. That's ridiculous. But what a lot of people don't understand is when you own real estate, property taxes is unrealized capital gains. That is taxing unrealized capital gains because you haven't sold your house, but you still have to pay property taxes every year. It's a stagnant asset, but you still have to pay property taxes every year. So it's like that is a real unrealized capital gains tax that a lot of people don't think about. So with real estate, I, I forgot to bring that up in that real estate video a little while back. And so some people called me out for that uh, because there's some people in real estate that figure it out. They buy an asset, they buy the real estate, and then they figure out how to cash flow it so that their overhead maybe might be three grand on this mortgage and all that stuff. And they make four grand a month. So they get one grand in the clear. So it doesn't really matter regardless. As long as they keep it for a long enough duration of time, somebody else is going to pay off that house for them. And then they get cash flow the whole time. Like in, in that situation, if you're not living there and you figured it out in that way, pretty genius. I would love to be in that situation in the future myself. So there is situations like that that make a lot of sense. Um, and somebody criticized me in a comment about that. And I'm going, you're right. I was wrong. I, I should have brought that up. That, that, that was a really good point. 
So these comment sections, long story short, very valuable. And I appreciate everybody for speaking up in them. Um, you, you pay property f flat earth or, uh, I don't know about the flat earth thing. I don't know if I'm on that level yet, but I do believe in what you just said on the comment. He says you pay property tax on a property that is owned by the bank. Well said, very well said, better than I said it. I'm exactly right. Um, so yeah, the unrealized cap, as crazy as it sounds, unrealized capital gains, I mean, literally crazy. I mean, could you imagine, they're talking about trying to revive, you know how you could revive the American economy? Just get out of the way. Just get out of the way. If all of these politicians just got out of the way and stopped trying to get reelected, our economy would thrive. If we just went to an Austrian model where we went to a free market, it might be hard in the beginning, but you know what? It'll be fine after you get over that hump and you have to do it at some point. You can't just keep kicking the can down the road. The problem is when you have four year terms and you have these terms for politicians, they want to kick the can down the road and then get through their, their, their situation or get, they get elected then they get in, they don't do anything and they kick the can down the road and they keep doing that. And so like how do, there's a reason why it's like when you actually study the information, you study like who wrote the constitution, James Madison, you know? So if you look up James Madison, what did James Madison said? say they asked him you know how what is the government he goes the, the, the federal government is supposed to be limited and defined along those lines what well, the actual writer of the constitution said the roles of the federal government is meant to be limited and defined he said that very the what is the definition of limited and defined can i can i like show that to politicians like the actual person that wrote they believe they hold their right hand up i'm going to hold i'm going to uphold the constitution you know this this and that uh and it's like did they do this when they did that? Did they like cross their finger or something like that? Because the constitution says their, their roles are supposed to be limited and defined, which means they're supposed to have a small government. The framers of the country were literally all libertarian minded. They were meant to have a small, limited government that kept us out of wars, kept things in check, that type of th stuff. They weren't supposed to be part of our, of our medical. They weren't supposed to be in our, our school systems. Oh my gosh. Could you imagine how amazing the school system would be if the government got out of it? Oh, it would be so cheap. It'd be like the cost of a master class. I learned so much from master class for like 200 bucks a year. Like so much more than any college ever taught me. And these colleges, they, they cost a fortune, a fortune. I know this poor girl, uh, there's there this woman I was dating and she's like $150,000 in debt and she can't get a job. That's like even 50 grand a year. It's like, you're never, you're going to be in debt for your whole life. Wait till the, the interest kicks in. Oh, it's going to be real fun for you. And here I was, I mean, I was living in my warehouse, dropped out and I'm in a position now where I'm in, I'm in now. And it's like, uh, I think that there needs to be, I, I, honestly, I don't see any need for the college system, really, especially at these prices. Like, if I had it my way, I mean, I have a big chip on my shoulder. The college system has been dramatically affected by the government presence. So, like, how do you fix this? You just get them out of the way. Make the government smaller. Like, make the government small again. Make them have less power again. We the people again. That's what needs to happen here. You want to know where I lie on the on the political spectrum? I believe in a libertarian philosophy. I not only do I believe in a libertarian philosophy, but I believe that there shouldn't be a two party system. There should just be the libertarian system. An American was a libertarian. A lot of people forget that. Like we never we weren't supposed to be divided. This is this is a tactic to make people hate each other. But really, Americans should realize you all have unilateral power. You all have you, we the people have have power together. And we all should have a decentralized power structure, which is literally a libertarian model. So it's like, I, I'm so sick of somebody saying, oh, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat. It's like, no, we are all supposed to be libertarians. I hate, I hate defining myself like that. I'm supposed to be a free thinking libertarian, all of us. And, it, and once people realize that, and that's what I share, that's, I shed that light on my channel. Um, like, am I conservative? Am I liberal? Am I this? No, I'm a libertarian. I believe in get away from me. Like that was the whole model. If you want to know the model of the constitution, it was literally like F off. That was the whole model. <laughs> if, you, if you wanted to summarize it, it was that just get off my lawn. That was the whole constitution was, was that get off my lawn, no taxation without representation, limited and defined government. And what we have now is exactly the opposite. If the framers watched what we were doing, they go, who created this federal reserve thing? This is treason. This is treason. What are you guys... By the way, that's parody, 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 disclaimer, not financial advice, not financial advice, disclaimer, not true, just total parody. What I just said right there is total parody. Everything in this video is total parody, by the way, to anybody watching this video, total parody. But they would literally come and go like, 
Who allowed this treasonous entity to be in, in, in control of the monetary system? Are they even part of the government? No, they're not. So who created them? What, what is this? Like, I could just imagine, like, like, Thomas Jefferson coming in and looking at what they did and being like, what did you guys do? Like, what is this? Did you give me my musket? Get, get, like, <laughs> I, I couldn't even imagine. I couldn't even imagine. They would be like in an uproar. Uh, and you allowed this? You weak people. There's a saying, and I guess I'll leave the live stream at this level. And if you, if you, if this, if everything I'm saying resonates with you, please do follow me on Instagram at Rob Soltan on Instagram. I hate to shill myself that much, but I'm, I'm going to be dropping something really soon there. And so I want that. I want to spread some stuff on that as well, but make sure you're subscribed to the channel because there's going to be a lot of stuff being posted on this channel. And if you resonate with this, would appreciate it. But If they came to today's day and age and they the way they wrote the Constitution, the way they wrote, um, I mean, everything, the way they designed the country and they saw how it's being ran today, they would declare, in my personal opinion, parody, this isn't true. Uh, I think they would call it treason. Because what are you doing? You're diluting the system. You're diluting the dollar. You're outright lying. You're saying you could stop inflation by raising it not even 1% when it's 7%. Uh this is this is aiding and abating uh, other other countries, like it, in my opinion, like it, 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 or parody, not true, just just joking around right now. Parody, um, it's it's damaging the country. So I mean, that is literally the definition of it. So I mean, there's that, but I think they would look at this and just go, "What is going on? What in the world did you guys do to this this beautiful situation that we placed you in?" You're paying taxes on your real estate. What is that? that? Unrealized. What is that? We said no taxation without represent. We we throw we threw tea off of a boat and we fought a bloody war for this. We hid in bushes and took out people on the way to. We we cheated to get, make this. Like you got to remember, these were the people who created the country were some like bloodthirsty rebels. The the the, the code of 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 uh, of war back then was to line up. And take each other out in these lines. And they're like, mm, um, this, this is how you know they were like, they were independent thinkers. They were like, mm, nah, I'm not going to do that. You got cannons and really fancy weaponry. We're going to chill in the bushes on the way to that. We're going to chill in the bushes up there and we'll take you out on the way to that. So why don't you, why don't you tell us what path you're going to, oh, where's the war going to take place? Gettysburg? Okay, okay. On the way there, just let us know where it is and what path you're taking. And we'll see you on the way there and take you out for that. And that's why we got the United States. We got the United States by cheating. It's true. Can't. It's the truth. I'm gonna always tell it like it is on the channel. It's like we got the United States by cheating at war, <laughs> and so they did. All, they did all of that just to give us the system that we have today. And the system that we have today is the exact opposite of what they had planned. They had the exact opposite in in store, and so it's just it's sad to see it. It's sad to see a country so divided. I hate that. Um, I want to see people realizing that the, the, and you know what? A lot of people that are like very democratic or they're very liberal or whatever, they're starting to realize that it makes sense to be independent. It makes sense that the government can't get these things done as pretty as it sounds. Oh, the stimulus package, we needed it. It was so, they, then they feel they didn't do the research. And back in the day, please do look up my stimulus package videos. If you look back on my stimulus package videos, I was calling it like it is the whole time. You will never see on my, if you go through my whole channel and you like specifically pull up those stimulus package videos, I called this out. I hate to pat myself on the back because it's super egotistical and arrogant, but I swear if people, people in, I know there's people in this live stream that was part of my channel back then. I literally was saying inflation is going to run rampant. All of this is going to dilute the dollar. It's going to damage us way more than it helps us. This $1,200 is going to cause your grocery bills, your gas to go through the roof. I was saying this back in March of 2020. Like I was saying this way back then, all throughout 2020, all throughout 2021. I was, everyone was doing stimulus package update. Give me subscribers and preying on people. Give me subscribers for the stimulus. That tax guy, meet Kevin, all of them were saying, all oh, the stimulus package update, stimulus package update. I was saying stimulus packages for fools. This is going to, this is going to kill the dollar. Uh, this is going to dilute. And I was even talking like the way that I put it is people, you want your wages to be deep, to be inflationary. That's what you want. So if you make four grand a month, you want to have an inflationary wage that goes from four grand a month to five grand to six grand to seven grand to 10 grand a month. You want an inflationary wage and you want the currency to be deflationary so you can save it. 
That's what you want. You want the currency to be safe. So you're, you want your currency deflationary, not inflationary like the Keynesian model we're given, but you want your wages to be inflationary, currency to be deflationary. But you know what we have now? We have wages that are deflationary, which are the same. So you're making four grand, you're making four grand or making less on unemployment or something like that. So wages are deflationary, but the you are getting paid in an inflationary currency is the exact opposite of what you want. You know what that does? It creates a huge wealth divide from the rich and the poor. The poor don't have assets. The rich's assets skyrocketed in value, which they're now going to dump and cause the entire market to collapse. The market collapses and the dollar collapses. The poor get more poor than ever before. The rich get more rich than ever before. And that's what we've seen happen here. Like, and I've talked about that in this, in this live stream, like it's a diabolical game of chess. All parody, all not true. Everything I said in here, complete, completely not true, by the way. Um, all parodies. We're still live. You know, I keep saying that. And you know what? We're still live. We're still going, everybody. Woo! <laughs> we figured it out. Thank you for hitting the like button, too. I think that might have something to do with it as well. I, I did see a, a super chat in here. I, I want to get to those. I don't like missing. If I ever miss one of those, let me know. Uh, it means a lot. Um, Celestial Appetite says, and gave me five bucks. I appreciate that. Said, it's because they're working for the other countries. They are traitors. Uh, you said it. You said it well. Celestial Appetite again. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. And then says, uh, they are they are punishing us for daring to stand up to them for the last five years. Uh, you, I'm, I agree, but, um, <laughs> I just want my, uh, I want my live streams to, to, you know, keep, keep, I haven't frozen yet guys. Right. We're still, we're still live. We're good. Right on, right on. We're good. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, it's hard to argue like I, I genuinely look at like all the moves on the chessboard that's happened, and it really does seem like the goal. If, if your goal was to make a wealth divide and to make it not not only make a wealth divide, but to make it very hard to get rich, so you have a divide, and I know this divide very well. Uh, maybe a lot of people in this live stream. We have six. Wow, we have six hundred people in the live stream. Uh, appreciate you for being being here, but. A lot of people in this live stream might not know my background. Um, I share a little bit of it from time to time, but I've had times in my life where I've been homeless. I was a waiter. I was I went to uh, a, a community college while I was waiting tables, dropped out of community college, didn't go through with going to a four-year because it was like, why am I going to pay all this money? Because I found out how expensive it was to go to one of these fancy schools. And I mean, I literally dropped out when I got accepted pretty much and I just, I didn't finish it. And I went and I was a waiter for what, three years? Uh, I, I started as a food runner, a bus boy. I worked all of those jobs, was a waiter. Uh, and then after that, I got, I waited on the right table for the collectibles dealer and they took me in and I protegeed under them. And then I started mineral exchange after that. Uh, and then, you know, after mineral, I was I lived in my warehouse for like five years, five or six years. And I have pictures. I literally have pictures of my old shower setup when I lived in the warehouse. If you go to my Instagram, there's literally a picture of that on my Instagram. So if people think I'm I'm not telling the truth. Literally, I posted pictures of my old shower rig and stuff, how I jimmy rigged the shower in my bathroom of a warehouse building. Um, but I was able to build my nest egg that way. So I know what it's like to start from the rock bottom and have less than, you know, five grand in the account and, and save money up together and build a company. And now, I mean, I'm moving millions a year with my company. So it's like to go from that to get to where I am now. Uh, I know that struggle. And I know that the struggle that they're going to like for the next for the next generation for people like right now in the next five years is going to be a lot. And that was hard to do. That was hard. It was not easy living without a pretty much without a shower. I mean, I ended up figuring out how to make one and stuff, but going to the gym for showers, you know, really living low on the pedestal, uh, trying to gather up things and build a company from scratch. It was hard. Don't get me wrong, but it's going to be a lot harder than it was for me for the next five years, I think. And my goal on the channel is to help spread entrepreneurship to help spread building a small business, not let people like Amazon and stuff take over, figure out ways for the small businesses to thrive. Like someone brought up one of my competitors in precious metals and the ego in me wants to go, no, buy your precious metals from mineral exchange, but I haven't finished my website yet. So I'm, I guess people got a little bit of a update on what I'm doing with, with my company uh, with mineral exchange and mineral X. Um, but there's that in me. That's like, I'm, I'm competitive still, but I also, um, 
I understand what it's like to get to a certain level with a business and like, and start it from scratch. And so my goal is to teach the things that help me on this channel. Like those Monday motivations, they actually are there to motivate me too, but they're kind of cheesy. Like the one I did yesterday, I posted a video on the Monday motivation thing yesterday talking about how I get more energy in business, which is, it's cheesy, but it hypes me up and it makes me realize like, am I sleeping with my phone next? Anyway, watch that video after this one. If you want, if you want to watch some of the videos on my channel, but, um, I feel terrible for the, for people that didn't see this coming and people that are not prepared for this. There's a lot of people with college debt right now. Like, imagine you have debt. Imagine you're like, I was dating this woman, uh, and she, she left, she went back, she went to a fancy school, right? And she's like 150,000 in debt. And her degree is not going to be able to pay that kind of money. Hopefully she doesn't watch this video. (laughs) Sorry. Uh, but it's the truth. And we talked about it actually a little bit, but it's like, that is crazy that the system puts you in that. But then not only that, but not only are you going to have to deal with inflation, but you're also going to have to deal with the fact that you're going to have to pay interest on that on top of inflation as well. And, and like your job isn't going to pay as much. So it's like, it's just crazy, crazy what's going on right now. Uh, it's almost like an entrapment of the youth uh, that they believe in this college system. And it also is this like, it seems like this college system is really not teaching good information because it's like, I don't know. It's like people, people got to be free thinkers again. You know, like how did I, uh, and I, I'm sorry, it sounds so arrogant, but I'm just trying to relate it to myself. I don't want to be like, I'm some sort of guru or whatever, but I'm just a, an ex waiter. And I figured out how to make this set. I mean, it's not easy figuring out how to do a live stream, how to get the stream deck thing set up, how to get this fancy Joe Rogan mic thing going, how to make a little, I made this whole set myself. I didn't hire a set designer. I don't have anybody working for me. I edit all my own videos. I do all the thumbnails, all that stuff. So it's like all those little details and like this set, I mean, I put maybe 10 grand into this or five, no, probably like 10 at this point, but it's like, I'm self-taught. I invested it all myself. And how did I do that? For free. All the information is on YouTube for free. This video is free. You know, I don't have a Patreon or something like that. So if you're watching this video and you got some good information from it, totally free. So it's like, that is where you can, you can get ahead now. It's like, if you, if you find a way to have high speed internet, keep your overhead low, you can build a business. And it, it bums me out when I saw like the data, I have a video that I'm working on and I've been studying to kind of put this video together. It's, it's talking about, you know, how hard it is to be a millionaire. It's going to be one of my next videos on the channel. And so if you're not subscribed, that's the next video dropping, please do click the subscribe. So I'll show that again real quick, click the bell afterwards, but I'm making a video on how hard it is to be a millionaire. And I'm putting a lot of research into it. And like actually going through the data because you know that millionaires like nearly doubled throughout the pandemic, throughout this going on. It's like they've, they, we've made so many millionaires through this. It's crazy. But the, the numbers on how hard it is to be a millionaire, I mean, it's like, like for an entrepreneur to succeed, it's only like five to 10% of them succeed. And why is that? Why are only five to 10% of entrepreneurs succeeding when you have, you know, like a supercomputer in your pocket, you have a supercomputer in your pocket. You have all of this access to, to platforms, to market and all this stuff, but only five, 10% of them succeed. How, why is that? You know why five to 10% of entrepreneurs succeed? And it's not like 50% of them succeed. It's because they're college education. College education stops people from being entrepreneurs and it forces them to be stuck in this system where they have this interest. They have to pay on a ridiculous loan to get a piece of paper that was borderline worthless. Um, it's sad. I mean, like, why has it become the, the, I'll end the video on this because I've gone for too long, but, uh, it's, and also I'm going to, I think there was a comment that I missed on there as well. I'll get to these comments as well, but the, the, this way to succeed is, is just by not getting yourself put in debt and not over leveraging yourself. And the college system does that. It tends to make these kids get over leveraged and they focus on polishing this resume. They get out of college and they go, look, I got this fancy degree. I learned my Keynesian economics. That guy, Rob Soltan on YouTube is full of it. That guy doesn't make any sense. Austrian economics. What a fool that guy, Rob Soltan. Can't believe him. He's just, I don't want to talk. I believe in Keynesian economics and I have this polished resume. Look at my degree. Give me a quarter million. And it's like, no. Like all of my, my friends, you know, you have to have an expendable income to be in collectibles and I sell collectibles. So I talk to a lot of CEOs and people like that and whatnot. And they're all like, I don't, I don't care about these resumes. Look at Elon Musk. He's like, I don't care if you even went to high school. How, know what Elon Musk cares about? How valuable you are. Prove to me how valuable you are. What are you going to do for me? This is my business. This is how much I make. How much more money are you going to make me in my business? Okay. You're going to make me a hundred grand more a year. Well, you're worth 80 to me now or 50 to me now. Period. So many people, they want to take, 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 and they don't think about providing value. 
And really the key to success is, is how much value do you provide and how much, how many people do you provide that valuable, valuable thing to? Uh, and so that's the narrative that needs to change is like, how much value do you provide? And I've talked about that in prior Monday motivation videos. If you go to my, my channel, maybe show some love to those videos cause they don't get many views, but I, I spend some time on those because, uh, I try to hype people up to be entrepreneurs and whatnot. So if you go to my, my playlist, I kind of s- divided things into sections on the playlist. If you click to the main channel in the playlist, make sure you click subscribe in that process. But I posted a video on, uh, I post like every Monday I try to make one of those videos. I've been doing it a little bit more often lately, but I've done like maybe four of them, five of them or something like that. So check those out. I've talked about that on those videos, but I think I missed a comment. That was a super chat on here. I don't like to miss those. I appreciate you. I know a lot of people miss the super chats, but if you're so generous to, to give me money on here, like that, that hypes me up that you do that. And those add up. So I, I never like to miss one of those. Um, William, William Bedard gave me two bucks and says, Boston Tea Party due to taxes raised from two to 3%. Yeah, that's what they, <laughs> they, they started a war over 1%, guys. That's what they did. They're like, one, you're going to raise it from two to 3%. Give me my musket. Give me my musket. We're starting a whole new thing around here. Uh, it, it's, and then now it's like, you think about property taxes, you think you, you have to pay sales tax. You get taxed on, on the thing you bought and the thing that they bought, the person who owned that item that sold it to you had to pay taxes on that. But you have to pay tax sales taxes when you buy something. Then when you go to sell something, you got to pay taxes. And then when you make a, you make a profit, you got to pay taxes on that. Then if you die, you got to pay a tax. And the whole time, if you own real estate, you had to pay property taxes along the whole time. It's like, when does it end? When does it end? Because these fools with all of their taxes have still managed to put us $30 trillion in debt and have an inflation level of over 7%. They, well, who's going to pave the roads? Well, you know what? My roads are potholed. My roads got potholes. And if it was a, a Austrian economics model, I bet you my roads would be smooth. And I bet you in, they wouldn't made a, try to make a train that they never finished and wasted billions and billions of dollars to be 10 years behind the competition on all the transportation and things that they're doing. I mean, they're just absolutely incompetent. It's like bingo players running the entire monetary system. Is that where they got Yellen and Powell? I think they got him from the bingo hall. It makes sense to me. Um, Paul Allen, I appreciate that. Paul Allen gave me five bucks and to tell you all, buy physical gold and silver. Paul said it, not me, not financial advice. Disclaimer, disclaimer. <laughs> I think I've said disclaimer like 80 times in this video, and that's why we're still live right now. We've got, we're live for two hours up in here. Yeah, potholed all through Atlanta, Georgia. It's like, and that, that's the number one line. Well, who's going to pave the roads? Who's going to pave the roads? You know who would pave the roads? We the people would, because we'd have so much money that you didn't steal from us. That's who'd pave the roads. And, and anyway. But, yeah, I just like to tell it like it is. Hopefully, I'm allowed to tell it like it is for a long time. If you subscribe to the channel, maybe that helps with it. If you hit the like button, really appreciate it. But, you guys, we've been live for two hours, just so you know how much I appreciate you all. I was planning on being live for 30 minutes to give a little update on what I thought of the Fed. I'll be back tomorrow on the live stream thing. If you want to reach out to me, if, you have some, if you're interested in you know collectibles or you're interested in precious metals or whatnot, Hit me up on Instagram. Um, I don't like to shill what I do or th- that stuff. I, I say it a little bit, so I guess I do a little bit. But um, if you want more information on that or if you want to see what I'm into, what my business is and all of that, check me out on Instagram, at Rob Soltan on Instagram. Please do shoot me a follow there. I really do like to put in the story, you know, when I'm going live and put a link in there. I think when I hit over 10K or something on the Instagram, you get the swipe up feature so people can just swipe up from that and go right into the live feed. So that'll be pretty cool in the future. Um So I am spending a lot of time devoting a lot of time to the Instagram because also to share photos and videos is very good for collectibles. It's like, it's easy to share what I, what I do for a living and whatnot. Um, so spending a lot of time on the Instagram as well at Rob Soltan on Instagram, please make sure to follow uh, or subscribe to this account. If you want to follow me on Twitter as well, it's just look up Rob Soltan on, on Twitter. I'm on the, the platforms I use is YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm really not on any other platform. Those are my three. So if you want to follow me on those three places, I spend a lot of time there. Um, but you can actually individually message me on Instagram. So if you have a DM, I've been getting back to all my DMs. So I, I'm, I think there's only like a hundred or something left. So I've been doing like 20 to 30 every morning. Sometimes I get like 50 done, but shoot me a DM. I usually will get back to you within like a week or two on Instagram. So if you have a question or something like that, shoot me a DM on there. If you're interested in precious metals, collectibles, shoot me a message there. Um, there's going to be an update on my company pretty soon, but I, I just have, I'm not ready to launch it just yet. So 
I'll probably update on Instagram when that happens. And I'll say a little bit about it on, on YouTube as well. But please do make sure you click that subscribe button and the bell afterwards. See you tomorrow, actually. Uh, people are saying turn the sand. You, usually when we're in these live streams, if we weren't two hours in, I'll say, you know, if we get to a thousand likes or something, I'll flip the timer another 30 minutes. But we've been two hours on this one. I actually want to shoot a few more videos um, like that are not live. I do a lot of live streams because I like to, and even in my videos, I don't edit them. I just, I trim off the beginning and the end. I, I don't do any editing. Um, but I, I want to put some like 10 minute, 15 minute clips out there as well. In addition to these live streams, but I plan to do a lot more live streams. If you check, I actually did like, I feel like I did like eight videos or nine videos in the last week or two weeks. Um, so the, the video rate, I'm, I'm bumping it up a lot on the channel. I'm spending a lot more time here at the, the office and I'm really excited to be growing the channel a bit. Um, really, I'm hyped up about everybody spending time in this live stream. Um, this was a really successful one, and I appreciate it. I can't believe we're almost at 1,000 likes up in here. Maybe I should stay live. You know, Maybe I should just stop everything I was planning to do and just stay live. <laughs> but uh, I, I really do appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. And the main thing is, like, I don't, I don't expect you to subscribe, but if you found this information cool and valuable and you want to be part of this community... I really want to have you in the community in a way because the more numbers we have, the the more we can get this information out in a way. If you catch my my drift, you know, it's like a, I want to get my numbers up because it's easy to get, take you out when your numbers are small. Parody, just getting disclaimer, disclaimer. <laughs> but in all seriousness, uh, I really appreciate all the support I've been getting. I recently broke 25K on here and that was a big number for me to break uh, as well as over a million views. And so that hypes me up and I'm, I'm just, I'm dead set in 2022. I'm getting over, I've said it like five times in this video, but I, I am getting to 2020. I will, I'll probably post a picture of that on my Instagram. I have a piece of paper. I printed out a piece of paper with that hundred K plaque. This might give you a little bit of insight on how much, how superstitious I am in a way and competitive. I printed out a paper with that hundred K plaque and I wrote Rob Soltan on it, 2022. And I, I look at that in my mirror every morning. I'll post a picture of it on my Instagram, but sometimes you, you have to really visualize whatever it is that you're trying to do and think about it every single day. And I, I, I believe in a vision board. Like when you, when you, especially like in your bathroom or somewhere you take a shower every day. It's like, I remember when I didn't have a hot shower and now I do. And I look at that every day and that's my goal. I'm going to get there. But, uh, hang on here. Jim, Jamil Singleton. Uh, I appreciate that. Gave me 10 bucks. Jamil says, Hippo character with a pink hat flips it backward and raises his thumb in the air. I'm I'm confused on that one, but maybe somebody understands it. But I appreciate that. Thank you, Jamil. Seriously, thank you. It's very generous of you. Um, and then Bite Hunter, Bite Hunter, I really appreciate that. Thank you, Bite Hunter. Says gave me twenty bucks and says I uh, I mean if you if you want to go and live and use another video with Fed giving your comments on the event makes it transformational. I, I'm, I'm excited about it. You know, it's a thing like with, with my set here, I, I like to measure twice, cut once sort of thing. Like there's a saying, I think it was um, Abraham Lincoln said this and it's really resonated with me. Like my whole business and all, everything I do really now. And there's this line, he said something, I don't want to butcher it, but something along the lines of if I had a week to chop down a cherry tree or chop down a tree, I would spend the first five days sharpening my ax, something along those lines. Um, and so with this set, it was like, build the set out, make it a, a thing where I can just click a button and go live and then have it dialed in in that way, figure out how to do a thumbnail. So I don't have to ask an editor and wait for somebody else. Like I don't like waiting on other people. So I just do it all myself. Um, so I built the set and made it. So it's just a point shoot. Boom. I don't like to edit my videos. So that helps. And so I just trim off the beginning, trim off the end figure out, just post the video. Like this one, for example, like some people spend a lot of time, if you go like into the description of the metadata on YouTube, they'll put like all of these keywords and whatnot. And I try to do that myself, but I just like in this title, I put fed update. Uh, Cause I just want to let the actual content speak for itself. And then if people, people underestimate how much they can spread an ecosystem, especially in today's day and age, if a thousand people tell two people, then you have, you know, 3000 people now. And if those 3,000 people tell two people, then you have 6,000 people now. And then those 6,000 people tell three people, then you have 18,000 people now. And then those 18, like you, the, the, how fast a network and a web can grow is staggering, especially if the information is worth sharing. So my goal on the channel is just to make the information worth sharing so that when people are in a live stream or they watch one of my videos, they don't feel like they wasted their time. Um, that's my ultimate goal. And if I do that, I'm hyped. Uh, that's my goal. 
So if I earned a subscription, I did. If I didn't, I didn't. So if you want to click subscribe, you do. If you don't, you don't. But I would really appreciate it if you did because I really value these comment sections and I value the, the community we're building is, is really cool. And I promise I'll keep doing these live streams so that we all kind of can talk together. Brad Phillips, I appreciate that. Gave me five bucks and didn't, you didn't even have a, you did have a question or a comment or something? Appreciate that, man. Thank you. It's very generous. Um, Atlas, <laughs> Atlas says, it doesn't take five days to sharpen an axe. You know what the saying means. You know what the saying means. It, it's the principle. Measure twice, cut once. But thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. I'm going to sign out. Appreciate all the support and see you at the next video.